Yo, what up, guys? Welcome to Fresh Fit Podcast. Just kidding. Welcome to Fred Reacts, guys. We're going to be covering um, Ross Ulbrick today and the Silk Road. Let's get into it. A special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. This is what Fed Reacts covers. Defender Jeffrey Williams and Associate Weissel did commit the felony. So here's what 6 9 actually got. Racketeer conspiracy. This attack shifted the whole U.S. government. This guy got arrested. Espionage, okay? Trading secrets with the Russians. John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the killer clown, okay? One of the most prolific serial killers of all time. Killed 33 people. Zodiac Killer is a pseudonym of an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California. All these serial killers, got they really get off on getting attention from the media. Many years, Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of minor girls at his home. It was OJ working together to get Nicole killed. We're going to go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense. Yo, what up, guys? Welcome to Fed Reacts. Today, we're going to be covering Ross Ulbrich, a.k.a. the creator of Silk Road. Quick announcement for you against the show, rumble.com slash freshfit. As you guys know, that is where we post uh, all of our content. So if you guys want to go ahead and find us over there, we are there. And then also rumble.com slash fredreacts as well, where uh, the Bin Laden video we just dropped it this Thursday. You guys have been waiting for that one for a while, so we dropped it. Um, it's finally up. Uh, that's the one where they stormed the compound, and this Navy SEALs um, go into detail of how they were able to um, you know, neutralize the threat in Abbottabad, uh, Pakistan, back, I think, in, like, 2011, 2012. Um, also, um, TV, as you guys know, and just so you guys know, DMs on Demand is live right now. Use the code BLACKFRESH. Um, we could throw the link in the chat for y'all as well. Um, we're going to keep it open for y'all until tomorrow, Cyber Monday. Just type in BLACKFRESH, and you'll get half off, because uh, fresh is black as hell. And uh, also, oh, shit, it's, it's invalid. All right, we got another man. Actually, let me uh, go ahead and tell my guy that we need another one. Um, cause he probably only had it there for 24 hours. Let me hit my guy right now. I'll get up a new code for y'all. So don't get it right now. Let me, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't get it right now. I want y'all to save some money. God damn it. Hold on. Put, we need a <laughs> new <laughs> code. Oh, I can Ooh, lower your sorry, volume. My, my new code. We can make it cyber fresh, cyber, cyber black fresh. fresh. <laughs> cyber fresh. <laughs> All right. Bam. Okay. Uh, can you turn that down? Yeah, no, I. I can still hear it. Is it me? <laughs> Who's this? Sorry, my bad. Oh, no, it's me. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so guys, um, so I'll, I'll get that fixed out by today, but we'll have the code up for tomorrow. Um, and then tomorrow we got Mark Tilbury on for Money Monday. That's going to be lit. I'm going to go up there, do an interview with them, and then come back down. And um, CastleClub.tv. Oh, Twitter. Guys, Unplug FedEx. Check me out over there, man. I've been posting a bunch. I've been going crazy on there. Uh, the, it's growing pretty quickly. Uh we're gaining almost a thousand or so a day, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, five five hundred to one thousand a day, so that's good. I, I cover a bunch of topics on there about pop culture. Um, I cover pop culture, politics, geopolitics. Um, you know, uh, what's it called? Certain uh, current events. Yeah, that stuff I as well. You. Uh, you guys know what that sound effect means. Um, so I cover all that. So don't worry, guys. If you guys want to go ahead and see another side of me, and a lot of you guys want that stuff, get my opinion on certain current events, etc. I cover it all there. So make sure to check me out on Unplug FedEx. I want to grow that thing to 100K if we can. Um, and I also did a, speaking of Twitter, I did a pretty cool interview with Elijah Schaefer, guys. Go check it out um, on his YouTube and on his Rumble. Um, pretty good stuff. We talked about a bunch of different stuff. And uh, what else here? And then, okay, so you guys are spamming the chat about Angie. Let me make this very, very clear. I'm going to address this one time and one time only, okay? She went to the beach. She went with her childhood friends from Venezuela. I know everything that she does, okay? I have access to all her shit. She removed 5,000 plus people on her Instagram, okay? And her profile is private. People went ahead and stalked her, her friend's profile and her profile, screenshot it, and made it sound like, oh, what the hell is going on here? She went to the beach. Yo, if she can't go to the beach with her friends... With me knowing about everything that she does, then I don't know what to tell y'all. Like, <laughs> I know everything that Angie is doing, guys. All right? She's my chick. I know what the fuck's going on. Uh, and for her to be scrutinized like this, to go to the beach with her friends, right? With me knowing what the hell's going on. I mean, I'm I'm the authority here, okay? Trust me. I know what the fuck I'm doing, okay? She's not your girlfriend. She's mine. So everything she does is under my authority. I know what's going on. I have all her passwords, etc. And... It is what it is. So if you guys don't like it, whatever, man. But that's really weird that y'all are over here looking at a profile, which I've called some of y'all, literally like asking her, hey, please accept my request. Hey, I'm going to buy you nails, blah, blah, blah. Some of y'all are really, really weird, bro. And she's had to remove 5,000 plus people following her, and she tries to live a private life 
Um, and to be honest, I'm the one that put her in front of the camera. I said, hey, help me out with FedReacts, et cetera. She didn't really want to do it because she's a pretty private person. But, uh, but yeah, man, at the end of the day, guys, um, respect her privacy. Like, you know what I mean? She's not a public figure like me. Y'all want to criticize me? That's cool. But trust me, I know everything that's going on. <laughs> I definitely do. She checks with me before anything that she does. And if she wants to go to beach with her friends, I don't play. Hey, it is what it is. Your childhood friends, it is what it is. Um, yeah. You know, I know what's going on. So, uh, that's weird, man. That's weird that y'all are, like, stalking her that hard. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, uh, with that said, where are we at here? Um, guys, you guys going to want to say what's up to the people? Yo, what's going on? This is Mo. Uh, happy to be here with you guys. And, yes, yeah, so Osama Bin Laden Raid is out on Rumble, um, especially. So, yeah, Rumble only for certain reasons. But other than that, you guys can follow me at Big Mo underscore B-I-T-W. That is B-I-G-M-O underscore B-I-T-W. Don't forget the memo to believe in Big Mo because that is an M-O. <laughs> What's going on, guys? <laughs> J-Bills, you guys can follow me on Instagram at J-Bills. Appreciate all the love from the Red Pill stream. Go ahead and comment and keep getting the views up. And this will be a good show tonight. All right. Uh, cool. So, um, Angie, you want to tell them anything about we got what we got coming up or cases that they got? Well, I have an updated list. I didn't update it. I didn't update it like this week because we're gonna have Silk Road. So this week that is coming now, um, and December first and all that stuff. Actually, on November third, on Thursday, November third, I'm gonna make another live so to update this list that I have right now. But the one that I have right now that I updated last week, I have Jonathan J. Pollard, uh, which is an intelligence analyst. Jeff Jeff Davis A. Michael uh, Michelle Blair, Mark Duggan. Mahek Bukhari. Also, guys, you you keep sending um, cases from out uh, from outside uh, foreign cases, and uh, as I as I told you before, we're gonna like prioritize the ones here in America, and then we're gonna do the ones that you guys request the most. The one that is uh, upvoted right now, it's um, the Canadian serial killers, uh, the Bam and the Ben and Barbie killers, uh, Paul Bernardo and his wife, and that's the ones that I will probably cover next for like foreign cases. That's that's the one from ca Canada. The Osama bin Laden dropped this Thursday, um, if I'm not mistaken, Rymo. Yes. On Rumble. Just yes. Rumble just came only. out this Thursday. Yeah. So yeah, uh, you guys been requesting that one for for a while now. Um, they won the University of Texas clock tower. It was uh, ages ago that the clock tower. Um, they put a bomb in it and like. Exploded. Oh. Damn, they asked for that a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Chicago Outfit, um, the Rwanda Genocide. That's I think it's that's from Africa, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, the Iceman. I don't know. You said er, er, like. Yeah, because we 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 remember we spoke with a couple mafia people. Actually, yeah. uh, uh, Michael Francis himself said that it's sensationalized. It's not, he didn't kill yeah. that many people. Yeah. So once and, we, and you guys know we that he was a capo. Um, uh, for God damn it, which crime Michael family Francis? it was? Michael Francis, he was a cop, Colombo crime family, thank you. Yeah. When we brought him on, he was saying how the ice man, and I always suspected that his numbers were off a bit, that he didn't kill that many people. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was sensationalized for clout, but um, but yeah. Anything else? Um, Ivan Milad is the most uh, prolific serial killer in Australia. People have been asking for that as well. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's about it right now. Oh, the Rob Elementary School shooting. Okay. That too. Um, and then one other thing too, I, I said like, uh, uh, and just to put a bow on this thing with the whole Angie thing, people saying what they're gonna say. Um, somebody mentioned that she went to a concert, or whatever, with a guy. Guys, that's her brother. I've met oh, him yeah. on multiple <laughs> occasions. They went to a comedy event. Um, I've met, I've had dinner with him. That's I've spoken with him. I know show. him personally. That was her brother that she went with, guys. <laughs> so, um, you know, if you guys want to sit there and say, oh, my chi and blah blah blah, okay, you can say what you want to say, but. I know him. I've met him on multiple occasions. Uh, he came down from Tampa to visit her. Yeah. They, they have a very close relationship. I trust him, obviously. That's her fucking brother. So, you know, they, they, they go out together every now and then because they have a very tight bond. They don't see each other that much. So, you know, uh, obviously I don't have to explain myself or whatever, but it just goes to show how sick and weird some people are where they're stalking Angie's private life and making mm -hmm. assumptions that just quite frankly aren't true. Um, hell, she she was thinking about deleting her Instagram, and I told her, no, you're not going to let these weirdos win. Keep your Instagram. Um, I know what's going on. You don't have to worry about that shit. And it is what it is. But, yeah, people are spreading these false rumors. It, it's simply not true, man. Guys, it's simply not I, true. I do want to address something real quick. I'm not going to get emotional. Myron didn't want me to talk because he will think I would get emotional because I was really pissed before this. Um, I do want to address um, 
whatever you hear, guys, um, from people that uh, whatever name pops up, um, I did used to live with some people before in Doral ages ago, right before marrying, and um, I didn't have anything to do with these people. They were just roommates, and that's it. So the, uh, the fact that you're popping out uh, names that I haven't heard in ages, like it's just crazy to me. I don't know who you're talking with, whoever is clipping this or, is, or like putting this information out. But I, I suggest you to just come to me, <laughs> check check your facts with me, you know, like because I'm the first hand like contact that you can like verify this information with. So um, instead of creating rumors and causing me problems because it's getting it's getting so far that you guys are going to my family and like DM yeah, my family. Yeah, messaging our parents and shit. It's weird. It's it's really bad. And and a lot of people that know me because they don't speak the language, they don't know that I do this and they don't know um, what I do. So when you guys go with this rumors and stuff and you go to them and ask stuff, they are gonna ask me and I'm here, like, they're all confused then. So before creating rumors, just come to me, ask me personally, if you have a question, like I can easily like address it. Okay? Yeah, well, remember Angie, the, the truth doesn't matter when a story that isn't true is more entertaining. Don't forget that. But yeah, yeah that well, guys, that's that's pretty much it. We addressed it. It is what it is. You guys can go ahead and run with whatever rumors you want. But um, we addressed yeah. the concert situation, the, the beach, whatever <laughs> it is. It, it, you know, people are going to say what they want to say. Um, I think it's yeah. actually kind of ridiculous that we even have to talk about this. But um, hey, there's your answers, guys. Okay, yeah. don't believe everything you see on the internet. A lot of it is being sensationalized to draw your attention and cause needless drama. But we're going to go back to making all the content that you guys are here for in the first place. Um, and not necessarily address strange, awkward drama that isn't true. Um, cool. Let's go ahead. Uh, we can hit some of these chats real quick, and then we'll go ahead into the documentary. We got two documentaries that um, Angie found for y'all yeah. that cover this. Um, but I'll read these real quick. Um, let's see here. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, Satoshi, BTC will humiliate re in terms in ROI in a decade. Okay. I mean, you know, I think it's good to be diversified. Hey, Martin, do you plan on showing us all the weightlifting exercises we all need to do in the gym when you do the self-care channel? Need help on creating my workouts? Also, what color is your Honda Civic, Andrew Tate voice? It's it's, it's silver. silver. <laughs> it's silver. Um, and that's from Taco713. Uh, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists to adapt wor uh, the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Okay? Um, Mar Marco Velli goes, drop 20 pounds and looking to drop 20 more from 180 to 160. What do you recommend for passing the plateau? Um, this is why it's important, guys, to track your calories. When you track your calories, you know where you're going. Um, and if you're not tracking your calories, you're basically operating blind. I always use the analogy that you wouldn't drive somewhere you've never driven before without a GPS. Well, you shouldn't go ahead and go on your weight loss journey without tracking your calories because if you're not tracking your calories, you don't know what you're taking. If you don't know what you take in, you're not going to know how to adjust when you inevitably do hit that fat loss plateau. So you always want to be periodically decreasing your calories by about 100 whenever you hit a plateau and then bam the fat loss continues on okay um and when you're tracking everything you can go ahead and figure out what the best tool is whether it's taking another 100 calories away maybe adding in one day of cardio per week uh you can play with different variables when you're actually tracking things okay uh let's see here hey Martin, do non-agent fbi technology field operations wear a tire windbreaker jacket when out in the field or is it only reserved for agents not a lot of information about this online uh so here's the thing you only typically wear a raid jacket if it's an enforcement action. Um, you know, have we given raid jackets before to tech people whenever we have them on, on site to do something? Yeah. Um, just so they're, they're identified, etc. You don't have to necessarily be a gun toter to wear a raid jacket during a search warrant, but you're definitely not going to be anywhere near the property uh, when they raid it. You're going to come in after it's secure. Um, you know, and then you can go ahead and assist with the search. Like, for example, let's say we raid a house, right? Um, and the place is secure. We got everybody detained that we need to detain. House is ready to be searched. Then the support staff and personnel that might have an expertise, et cetera, can come in. Like, I remember before I've been on a raid where we went after someone who was selling, like, fake pharmaceuticals, right? And we had someone, a rep, from that company, right, there to identify the counterfeits versus the reels, et cetera, uh, and something like that, if we don't want them to be identified or whatever it may be, um, once the house is secure, we might give them a raid jacket. They could come in and help us identify, et cetera, just so that the, you know, the public might not necessarily know who they are or whatever it is. Um, so sometimes when you bring a subject matter expert or you bring someone in that isn't a gun toter, maybe you bring one of your analysts, et cetera, and they're in there, they'll wear a raid jacket um, during the uh, after everything is safe. So, And a lot of agencies um, employ that tactic with their pers uh, support staff. Very nuanced question, but a good question nonetheless. Uh, let's see here. 
Do the Derek Todd Lee case. That's from Kim Chillin. All right. Um, it's Liddy. It's it, written down. Liddy Titty goes, uh, after watching a lot of FNF, where whenever I am in public and I see my bitch, I find myself insulting them in my head instead of thirsting. I think it's a superiority complex. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Last Hallbender, part one of two. Mo, what was your reaction to CM Punk's surprise return? Yeah, that show was crazy. What do you think will happen? Props to Triple H for keeping it a secret until the last minute of the show. None of the WWE wrestler staff production knew. Best in the world. Go ahead, Mo. What Best do you think? Best in the world, baby. Yeah, um, you guys already know that's where the BITW, my name, that um, came from. So big up to CM Punk. I wasn't that surprised. Uh, Triple H is very in touch with, uh, he's very in touch and very in tune with what's going on in the wrestling community, what people want, the talent that's going over. So, like, uh, and every and everyone's been happy when Triple H has been taking the helm. And then, of course, um, I don't know if my, I don't know if I talked with Myron about it, but of course, with Shawn Michaels running the developmental system, so it was like WWE is still is great hands. I'm still a big believer in AEW. I still think competition is good. I still believe that AEW has a great product, but this was huge for WWE. This was huge for CM Punk. Uh, this was well warranted. I was against CM Punk leaving in the first place. I understood why. I know he just wants to close out WrestleMania, and he should. He's good enough, big enough to do it. But uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm very happy. So, yeah. Cool. Um, and uh, what do we got here? The last, the last whole bunner, uh Oh, uh, do you think WWE employees? Uh, reactions were real or kayfabe. Michael Cole threw his pen in frustration. Big Booty Ray Ripley, W. Pogs, gave the middle finger and mocked Punk. Seth Rollins started yelling, gave the finger, and had to be held back. I think it's pro. I think it's probably a work. Um, you know, kayfabe basically are they staying in character? Um, I do think it's a work. I probably I, I, it's probably in character. Um, I do hear that there was like backstage stuff, but there's times you're not too sure back if there's backstage stuff. If there is... It's probably under contract where they have to stay in character anytime they're on the premises, right? Yes. Like, you gotta, like, it doesn't matter, like, you know, you're here, because I, I remember Maven has a YouTube channel, and he basically said that they gotta be there at, like, 1 p.m. for Raw? Yeah. Some crazy like that? Very, like, nine hours very before Very early. Very, yeah. very early. So, so I wouldn't be surprised if um, they're not instructed to stay in character at all times when they're on the premises. I remember when I went to WrestleMania 28, that was down here in Miami, I went there, like noon p.m. like noon 1 p.m. and I was already seeing wrestlers coming in and mm. I was just there to, um I was meant to just do like tailgating yeah and there, there's a wrestler so. that that where they made that rule because one wrestler like would always show up late who who was it again um, I, I'm not I, like the eight hour rule uh that I'm not too sure uh, I, that's that's not an that's not an uncommon thing well, not like uncommon. Most wrestlers do come in on time. They do come in early. Yeah. Um, I forget who it was. Was it Jake the Snake? Somebody chronically was, would always show up late. Was it or Andre the Giant? Somebody, man. I forget who it is. Someone in the chat might know. Yeah. Um, someone said bring Maven on the pod. Maybe, bro. We could reach out to him. Um, I remember watching Tough Enough back in the day. That was and yeah. seeing him win. Yeah, like that I remember dope. that. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, too. that yeah. was way back in the day. I mean, his his YouTube channel's been growing a lot. Uh, you know, shout out to him. He's been giving a lot of the background on on how the WWE works, etc. Yeah, maybe we'll bring him on I, for y'all. I, I was very happy, and um, and I know another thing. CM Punk, he's big on his um protection for the wrestlers. I think WWE has does the best job more than any other wrestling company when it comes to protecting the wrestlers. A lot of times I say you got to protect these wrestlers from themselves. WWE does that better than anyone in in the wrestling industry. That is my take. I don't care which some people might disagree. I don't care. WWE does a great job protecting wrestlers from themselves. Sometimes you have to do that. So, yeah. Fair enough. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, King Darula. This is a pretty good question. Um, Myron, I have a GS7 interview coming up uh, uh, with as a tech for the FBI this week. This is in San Francisco. I'm having a hard time figuring out what questions are going to be asked. Interview is remote. Please guide me towards resources. I need to be prepared. Okay, so um, I've done a – actually, <laughs> good, perfect person to ask. I've done an FBI panel interview before, um, and as you guys know, I was hired by the FBI back in, like, 2017, 2018. Um, dude, just know that they're going to ask you questions about your character. Um, they're going to ask you questions about integrity, etc. cetera. Um, you know, more than likely, they're going to want to hear a story of a time where you were in a very tough decision. Uh, you had to make a very tough decision where it might have been easier for you to get something done, but you know, you took the high road X Y Z. Have a story like that in the uh, uh, somewhere. Um, just be truthful, man. Um, you know, obviously be candid. 
uh, you know, there's, they understand that you're human, etc. You might have made mistakes or whatever. Um, but um, whatever you do, just be honest. Don't lie. Tell stories that if they ask you to tell a story about yourself that shows uh, integrity or candor, have one that that's that, that comes to mind. Right? Could have been. I remember uh, for me, it was um, I was in college and everybody was smoking and doing drugs, and all my friends were there, and I wanted to stay at the party, but I left because I knew that um, being in an environment like that. It's just not a good look, especially with me um, wanting to get into a certain career field. So, obviously, I had to sacrifice, you know, building camaraderie with the with the friends and shit like that, and some fun um, for the long term. So, having a story like that in the back of your mind, etc., that you actually experienced that put you in a compromise, not, not compromise, but put you in a tough situation, um, that's a lot of times speaks volumes. So, have something like that in the back, and just be honest, bro, and don't take it too seriously. It's going to be a remote interview, so it'll be uh, a little bit easier. But I remember, yeah, when I did mine, uh, I had three agents interviewing me and typically what they'll do is they'll have um a 13 right so a senior agent then they'll have a supervisor which is a gs14 or a supervisory special agent and then they'll have an assistant special agent in charge or an asac interviewing you hsi does the same exact shit most of these agencies when they do their panel interview that's how they do it they have a case they have a, a agent that actually does cases a supervisor and then that second line supervisor which is an asac um and they'll ask you questions so don't be scared bro it, it um your interview they're probably not going to grill you as hard because you're not uh, applying uh for an 1811 slash special agent position so you're not going to be grilled as hard but um you know don't don't take don't don't stress out too bad okay uh, good question. Fantastic question. And then also, dude, do me a favor. Watch my um, watch my pod. I literally did an episode on how to prepare um, for a law enforcement uh, jo- career and it had to deal with interviews, background checks, all that shit. Okay? Uh, what else do we got here? K, K. Ratty goes, uh, hey, Martin and Angie, hope you're both doing well. I've been watching PDP podcasts and Tim Pool and keep hearing stories about people in power finding a way to cancel the next electoral votes by any means necessary. What's your take on it, Myron? Um, my take is if Trump doesn't win, we're fucked. That is my take. <laughs> Um, very simple and concise, but if Trump does not win the 2024 election, we are going to be in a very, very bad position. Uh, you know, as you guys know, we got conflicts all over the world, you know, one in the Middle East, one in, um, well, multiple in the Middle East, uh, one in Russia slash Ukraine, etc. And, um, you know, it's ironically enough, people say that Trump is terrible for, uh, for foreign affairs when I think actually we probably had some of the best um, foreign relations when Trump was in office. Um, his bravado attitude and his, um, how do I say this, his lack of fear with um, holding other nations accountable is actually what kept us safe. You know, you got someone like Biden who has interests in other places like China, etc. We did a whole video, by the way, talking about the Biden crime family and him being involved with uh, Ukraine and China and getting money from foreign nationals in questionable ways. Uh, you know, go ahead and check that episode out. But yeah, it's just not, it's just not a good look, man. So um, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll really see what happens. But I, I really do think um, that we can't have, obviously we can't have someone like Biden come in again. And uh, we need someone from the GOP. Um, I, I think Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy uh, Ron DeSantis and Trump are all good candidates. But the reality is Vivek and Ron DeSantis don't have enough of a market share for to, to actually win. It's going to have to be Trump. You know, Trump is so far ahead, he doesn't even go to the political debates, guys. Like, that should tell you something. Um, you know, uh, so it is what it is. Um, you know, Ron DeSantis, I think, was did a good job as governor in Florida. I think he should stay governor. Um, you know, shout out to him for trying to be president. But I just don't think he has the oomph to, to push there. His marketing isn't good enough. Um, and then Vivek is just way too goddamn small. Not enough people know about him. His policies are great. People might criticize him here or there. But I think in general, he's mostly good. Um, but, yeah, it, it, Trump is going to have to win, man, because he he's has the... Uh, the, he's pretty much going to be the Republican candidate. Anyway, uh, anything, any, any, what else do we got here? Uh, well, let's lit, fam. Uh, well, we lit. Let's go, team. Fucking annoying how people be starting all these rumors as of late. I swear they'd be having nothing better to do with their miserable lives. Yeah, it's a little weird, man. But you guys, this is a, this is kind of the price to pay um, for this. You know, I, I'm going to take 100% accountability. This isn't Angie's fault. This is my fault because I'm the one that dragged her into the limelight. She wanted to be behind the scenes more. Uh, and I said, no, it'd be better if you were just here. It's not your fault. Um, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm the one that told you to come on, right? Oh, so it's yeah. on me. It's not on you. She's a very private person, um, you know, and she's made a lot of sacrifices uh, because of it, uh, and I appreciate that, but it, it's it's on me 100% because I'm the one that dragged her in this light. So this is what comes with the territory, unfortunately. Um, 
Them niggas should go watch Kardashians or Love Island since they love drama <laughs> so much. Dudes acting like some fucking females. Yeah, it is what it is, bro. You know, uh, it's it's amazing to me that I have to explain that. Uh, yeah, that guy is her brother, guys. And they're like, whoa. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, yo, Elliot Rogers, a.k.a. leader of the incels, would be a fire episode. Okay. Uh, dudes are more worried about y'all's lives than spending uh, that time improving their own keyboard warriors. Yeah, yeah. It, it comes with the territory, man. Um, Jeremy goes, Myron, you should do a gun safety stream at the range with Fresh and Sneeko. Also, W. Angie, fuck the haters. Yeah, I'm going to do a gun <laughs> a gun range stream with Sneeko. Uh, he... Uh, we're supposed to do one today, but I just I woke up late, man. So, <laughs> I'll uh, but I will I'll give y'all a, a gun range stream with Sneeko uh, soon. Um, the Liam and you, I just wanted to give a shout out from California to the whole FNF team. I'm 23 years old, managed to get my credit score up thanks to your videos. Went from 430 to 700 plus. Currently waiting on my platinum card. Congratulations, the Liam and you. That's awesome. Uh, whenever you guys show me the, your wins with making more money or getting better credit, etc., it's a big W. Um, shout out to the whole FNF team, W Mar, W Angie, W Medium, Mokula, and W Bill, Blitz. Blitz. Because of you guys, I went from no credit until 30 years old to now a 730 credit score looking at four plexes to house hack. Love y'all. Yo, that's awesome, bro. That's what we're talking about. Good shit. Um, what else? Anything else? Medium Mokula. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all. That's that, was, that was it? All yeah. right. And, and just so you guys know, uh, up. as we speak right now, actually, I got up. Andy in the house. What, what more? And 10 and up. Okay, oh, time enough from here on out? Yes. Okay. Uh, as you guys are here right now, um, okay, someone asked a pretty good question. Well, any, uh, quite, uh, he asked, um, any tips for real estate as a Muslim? Um, guys, I, I, that, that, that doesn't want to use uh, interest loans, obviously, because usury is, is banned. The only way around it, really, guys, you got to buy houses cash. So, um, you know, is that the best and smartest financial way to go about things? No, but I completely understand that some people don't want to be involved with interest and in, uh, be involved in usury, so uh, I respect that. Um, just, yeah, you're going to have to buy houses cash. Uh, the positive to that, though, is that you own the house free and clear, and you're going to get way more cash flow, but your cash on cash returns might not necessarily be as good as using leverage, but it's up to you guys. Um, what else do we got? Uh, um, we're going 10 and up from this point forward, from this point on. and then, damn it, I was going to say something, and I forgot. I was, oh! As we speak right now, guys, I am getting the Fed React Studio Yay. made right now. Andy's in the house. Um, we've been, it's been a work in progress, guys. As you guys know, we prioritize building this studio up to the yep. highest level first. Um, once we got that built, um, took a short break. Andy had a bunch of projects that he was doing. So right now, he's actually here um, building the uh, the second studio. I would normally be helping him, but we're live on air right now. Um, I, I just can't stand behind and not help. I got I gotta help too. Um, I'm very particular about how things are. But either way, um, so you guys will see a new Fed React Studio. We're gonna decorate it, make it nice for y'all. And I've alluded to this on Sneeko stream. I might talk, I'll talk about it here a little bit. Um, I'm thinking about potentially gaming. Okay, on on there. Now, now with that said, <laughs> this is why y'all like Fed React because you guys get to see another side of me here. I used to play Overwatch, guys, at an extremely high level back in the day, okay? I made top 500, okay? Maybe for like a day or two. I wasn't on there forever. But I made top 500. Uh, for the nerds out there, that's like uh, well over 4,000 uh, you know, score. Um, playing McCree, Reaper, Zenyatta, Ana, who else? Mercy? Zarya. Mercy? Hell no, Mercy. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and Soldier. Lucio? Lucio? Uh, in hell, no, I never played Lucio. The only healers I played were Zenyatta and Ana, people that actually take skill. Uh, hey. Yeah, I was a really good Ana, too. Um, let's see here. But anyway, those are the characters that I played, all right? Uh, and I made it to GM level doing that, right? Uh, so, but... <laughs> I shouldn't be admitting this, but I'll admit it anyway. Um, <laughs> take some of the heat off Angie, because y'all roasting her. <laughs> <laughs> um, but all jokes aside, um, I am a very bad sport, guys. Extremely bad. Okay, I've been banned off Xbox Live. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yes, I've know? literally been banned off Xbox Live at, at least. That's crazy. Uh, maybe maybe fifty times in my lifetime. Oh, that's maybe fifty <laughs> times with different gamer tags. So um, different, gamer different, different gamer tags. That's yeah. insane. Yeah, I had to I had to make different gamer tags because they would ban me for bullying and harassment. So I had one 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 gamer tag. It was uh, Xbox Live can't ban me. Serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had another one called Teabag and Xbox Live. So um so yeah I I, I used to yeah man. And you broke some remotes. Oh yeah, I broke some controllers too. Some controllers. I, I'm a very bad. A big reason why I quit video games. Two main reasons why I quit video games. Number one. It was hurting my productivity, right? And then number two, 
I'm a very bad sport. I was breaking fucking controllers. I was getting a new controller like every other month and shit. I was raging. I was going crazy because I hate losing, um, especially when I'm like killing it and I'm like out here fucking killing everybody and then I'm carrying and we still lose. I fucking lose my mind. So, um, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to figure out because if I go on Twitch, I'm gonna get banned. I already know. <laughs> like if I, if I if I stream on Twitch, it's a fucking rap, bro. It's 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 fucking done, man. Like I used to do wild shit. Like uh, stream, I remember on. I'd be playing like Halo Two back in the day. Like a girl would enter the lobby. Oh hi! I'd immediately boot her out. You know what I mean? Like I would never want to play with girls on my team. Uh, or if, uh, when I was playing Overwatch, you come in, I'd be like, "Why aren't you making a sandwich for a man who's superior to you?" I'd make stupid jokes like that, right? And um, you know, I'd always get banned. So, Welcome, punch. So y'all, if if I do play. Um, Overwatch. Well, if I do play, what I'll do is I'll probably play Overwatch. Um, I'll take like a week or so to get get back to it, right? And like get get um, because I haven't played since 2018. I quit get video games. I'll never forget 2018. I stopped playing. I played like a few matchmaking games with McCree, and I said fuck this shit. And I just quit. Uh, cause I knew that, uh, it wasn't to my best interest, but now, you know, things are a lot better. Um, you know, obviously kind of hit where I've wanted to hit. I think for you guys, it would, you know, be, I mean, I'm going to keep buying real estate and keep making the podcast the best. Don't get it fucking twisted. But, uh, it's something that I might do with y'all maybe once a week where I stream video games. Y'all can he see me, uh, you know, kill people. Cause I, I can't play video games to be trash. I'm be keeping a thousand with y'all. I can't do it. I got to play at a high level. I got to be wrecking kids. I got to be talking shit. I got to be saying you're fucking garbage. You know, your mom's a whore. I got to be talking. I got to be in my element. Asagi. Okay. I got to literally be sitting here bullying them while simultaneously destroying them. Okay. Let them know how garbage they are. Cause I'm a big, big fucking trash talker. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but, uh, probably not even on YouTube. Huh? Probably not even on YouTube. Yeah, maybe not even on YouTube. I don't know. I'll have to figure out how I'm gonna do this. Cause once you, <laughs> what, what, once you in your zone, yeah, oh lord, <laughs> yeah, 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 well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> so um, just a little little thing. Uh, let me know in the chat what y'all if y'all want want me to um, you know, stream or playing Overwatch or some shit. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get into the topic at hand, right? Anything uh, else? I get? Did I forget? I'm, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I've been banned off Xbox Live a lot for bullying, man. Oh. Cause I don't. There's no mercy. I go hard as hell. Get it? No mercy. Yeah. Okay. WWF. No mercy. I see it. Uh, yeah, I was thinking the healer. The healer. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But she trash, bro. Hey. Oh, and speaking of which, I I, I made it to to GM level without a pocket mercy. Oh. With without a pocket mercy as a McCree, which is for all my nerds out there, y'all know how hard that is. Okay. No pocket mercy, bro. Uh, I did it. Play I had a guy that I played with that was a good Reinhardt, and we fucking just r rose the ranks. You know what I mean? Shout out Reinhardt. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Reinhardt. Reinhardt, shout out Reinhardt. Shout out to all the shitty Reinhardts that always be charging niggas, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, know that, you know that one guy that never holds a shield up and just always charges that niggas? Bro. You know, you know his move where he just fucking like, he's yeah, like, bro. Oh, and then he just fucking slides over the, slides yeah. through the map? Yo. Yo, those are the worst Reinhardts, man. <laughs> Nigga never puts the shield up. Just, ah! They just fucking goes in there and just, they just fuck his ass up and he dies. And then the, your team gets obliterated because they don't got a goddamn shield. So, um, all right, I'm getting really nerdy right now. Let me nah, stop. Nah, nah, nah. I, I would resurrect the whole team with ease, bro. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, y'all thought we died? <laughs> Heroes never die. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you yeah, know? yeah, I thought Mercy was, uh, was I thought it was a, yeah. yeah. But now you resurrected. How I you was, love that, bro? I was every Tracer's nightmare, bro. Oh, God. Yeah, that Tracer tried to come in behind seats, flashback, boom, Damn, headshot. Tracer. Pro shit, bro. Oh, my Pro God. shit. Tracer. Yeah, nigga. Oh, I never fan the hammer. Tracer. Scrubs do that. Oh, let me fan the hammer. No, that that's trash. Flashbang, headshot, boom, done. Hell, I, I got so good, I got to a point where I was using High Noon just to reload. It's High yeah. Noon. Because <laughs> for, for the dudes out there that are really good, y'all know what I'm talking about. It's easy to build that alt up. So you'll be bam, 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 flashbang, headshot, boom. And then someone else comes in, you're like, oh, shit. High Noon, get a six, a free six, and then bam, just fuck his ass up. And then all your um, abilities reload, too, when you do that. When you do that. Mm -hmm. So you can roll again, throw another flashbang, hit him in the head. I don't know if they nerfed it or whatever. But, uh... But yeah, bro, well, fan of the hammers for sorry ass niggas, bro. Well, if I ever see someone doing this dumb shit, ooh, with their McCree, I'm like, yeah, garbage. Well, there's an Overwatch 2 now. Ah, they yeah. Made, they did recently come out with a second one. Yeah. Um, A lot of the same I characters playing, plus more. You know when I stopped playing? I stopped playing right when they released uh that chick. The female uh, the female cowboy. Fuck, what's her name? Someone in the chat is going to put it. Oh. God damn it. It's Some, been a, it's been a minute since I played or watched. Okay, okay. The, 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 someone in the chat's gonna put it, but it, it was a it was a female McCree. 
Ashy. Ash? What, was it Ash? Yeah, Ash. Bam. That's when I stopped playing. Once they released her. That's when I uh, pretty much was done. Um, but anyway, cool. Let's go ahead and get into the topic. Let's talk about the Silk Road Ninjas. Mm. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Overwatch 2 did drop like last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that shit was fun, man. That shit was fun, but I was raging. Uh. I just showed my nerd self just now. <laughs> With my fucking Goku sandals. I think we know D already, my uh, W nerd and my Yeah. All right, uh, what do we got here with... Um, I, I've been telling people, bro, like, I, I'm one of y'all, man. I'm the same. <laughs> like, I'm not one of these fucking natural chads. Uh, question for everything you know was blank? Bro. Oh. Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yo, y'all are fucking crazy, bro. Yo. Bigger <laughs> on YouTube. What the fuck, man? <laughs> bro. Yo, w, w filters, bro. <laughs> Yo, just follow me on Twitter, nigga. You just follow me on Twitter, man. Just follow me on yeah, Twitter. Don't, don't, Elon, don't, take his Twitter. Come account, on, bro. man. Um, Myra, thinking of joining NYPD, took the test. The only thing holding me back is the background check slash amount of jobs I've had since being in college. It's been a good amount, and that might get me turned away from NYPD thoughts. Um, as long as you weren't fired for like some problems, like where you were stealing or doing some dumb shit, you'll be fine, bro. Okay. Um. You'll be fine. And NYPD is actually a very good gig, man. You'll make uh, six figures within a couple years. Um, granted, New York City sucks, but, you know, you'll make a decent amount of money. Uh, my, my, my tip is um, work work in the city, uh, but try to live in Connecticut or New Jersey. King Darula, Myron, when having a Fed job, getting a second job to supplement income is a priority. Can you go over your story? Seems so crazy how you made a second six-figure stream in such a short amount of time. Can you go over the steps? Ooh. Okay. I'm going to do a... Cliff Notes version, then we really got to get into the topic at hand, okay, guys? But I love y'all. I want to give you guys some sauce. And we started a little bit late, so I feel like I owe you guys this, okay? Um, number one, if you're going to be a special agent in the government, guys, you are going to get six figures at some point, okay? Most of the time when you get hired in, you're going to get hired. If it's ATF, DEA, HSI, etc., most of the time they hire you between uh, a five to a seven. Then if you got a master's degree, a lot of times they'll hire you in as a nine. However, once you hit GS-13... You will be making 100 grand per year, okay? Maybe even a GS12 in some cities, depending on the locality. So don't worry about that. Within five years, you're gonna be making six figures a year. Now, to be honest with y'all, that's more than enough money to live in most places in the United States, assuming you don't spend your money like an absolute moron. Now, let's say you wanna start a side business or whatever it may be because you just kinda of want to do it, right? Um, what I personally did was I, that money that I made, since I lived way below my means, I was able to save and I invested it in uh, obviously with Brandon Carter, got that mentoring, and then I was able to start up my fitness business and I was able to do a six figures. However, being a hundred, very transparent about this, it was an online business, which means there was very little overhead, no brick and mortar, no none of that. I was able to do everything online. So when I wasn't uh, working uh, for the G, I was able to um, do everything from my phone and uh, deal with clients and everything else like that. So. If you are going to start a side hustle while being working for the government, especially with an invasive job like a special agent where you're working all hours of the night, etc., um, you're going to need to do something that's online that has low overhead. Okay, uh, some kind of online service-based business is the way to go. Um, it could be consulting, whatever. But step one, and I've said this a million times, all got my guys in the military, all my guys in law enforcement, whether you work for a city, state, municipality, federal government, whatever it may be, always fill out outside employment paperwork. <laughs> If you work for the government, I don't give a fuck if it's the county, the city, the uh, the you know the state, uh, the federal government. I don't even give a fuck if you work for the Bureau of Indian Affairs, okay? Any type of government job, all right? Military, whatever it is, always fill out outside employment paperwork or make sure that you um you um don't need outside employment paperwork for whatever you're going to do. But knowing it's a government job, 99% of the time they're going to want you to fill out some type of outside employment slash outside activity paperwork. Get it cleared with your chain of command before you even start the business or start doing it, okay? Because it's out outside employment and activity, all right? So even if you're not being paid for it, you still got to disclose it. Now, you know, people are like, oh, but Myron, why do I got to do that? They're probably going to decline me. Well, trust me, put it this way. It's better for you to try and get declined, then you do it behind their back, and then they find out, and then next thing you know, fucking internal affairs investigation on your dumb ass. Stupid. So it ain't worth it, guys, to lose your main gig over it. But that's how I did it. Service-based business online, low overhead, um, you could do it on the side and understand the other thing too, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're not going to have time to go out and be as social as you want. You're going to have be running a business while also doing your main job. You're going to have very little, uh, uh, free time. So ask yourself if you're prepared to sacrifice. I think you should, but everyone is different. And some people are not willing to sacrifice being social. Okay. So that's the answer. Um, 
Uh, Gotta get myself done, Mark. Don't don't Marco, uh, Marco. Brandon, what do you say to a girl on the first date when you pick her up and you're in the car on the way to a date? Uh, I mean, bro, simple shit, man. Ask her to talk about herself. You know, simple questions, man. You, you guys, you guys, don't overcomplicate it, man. It's just a conversation. That's all it is. Yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Let's get into the topic at hand. Uh, we've delayed this. I apologize. Um, we got. Uh, let's go ahead and hit the Wikipedia first. So, guys, today we're going to be covering Silk Road and Ross Ulbricht. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, here he is. Um, Ross William Ulbricht, uh, born March 27, 1984, is an American s- serving life imprisonment for creating and operating the dark net market website Silk Road from 2011 until his arrest in 2013. Uh, the site operated as a hidden service. Oh, oh. One second, just make it bigger. Okay. Um, where are we at here? The site operated right here. Uh, the site operated as a hidden service on the Tor network and facilitated the sale of narcotics and other illegal products and services. Ulbricht ran the site under the pseudonym Dead Pirate Roberts after the fictional character from The Princess Bride. In October 2013, the uh, FBI arrested uh, Ulbricht and Silk Road was taken offline. In 2015, he was convicted of engaging in continuing criminal enterprise, distributing narcotics, distributing narcotics by means of the Internet, conspiracy to distribute narcotics, conspiracy to commit money laundering, conspiracy to traffic fraudulent identity documents, and conspiracy to commit computer hacking, which kind of sucks because, you know, he just facilitated the website to let it happen. But, you know, obviously... Uh, according to American law, you being in, uh, involved in facilitating a crime also makes you a principal. Um, so he's currently in the United States Penitentiary in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, real quick, early life. Let's see here. Uh, I graduated from high school. Hmm. He was a Boy Scout. He was a Boy Scout. Okay. I'm trying to figure out if he's one of them boys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Um all right, all right, all right. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's, uh, let's move on to the uh, to the next one. So Silk Road, guys. Silk Road right here is was a network of Eurasian routes active from the second century. What nigga? No, nigga picked up the oh, wrong Silk Road. Road. No, 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 this is man, one. bills, man. You gotta put Silk Road, Silk Road Marketplace. I just wrote that. This nigga Bills. Marketplace, yeah. <laughs> Y'all can't blame me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. That's the um, most nigga shit I've seen. Hey, that's this nigga so really searched Silk Road and clicked the one of the, like, the historic times. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put Silk Road Marketplace, Bill. Oh, I, I didn't notice either. He said I didn't I notice. notice either. <laughs> All right, we got it, we got it. Okay. Y'all got it this time? <laughs> yeah. All right. God damn. All right. Silk Road was an online black market and the first modern dark net uh, market. It was launched in 2011 by its American founder, Ross Ulbricht, under the pseudonym uh, Dead Pirate Roberts. He managed to, uh, the entire uh, marketplace from his personal laptop, which was seized by the FBI on October 1st, 2013. As part of the dark web, Silk Roads operates as a hidden service on the Tor network, allowing users to buy and sell products and services between each other anonymously. All transactions were conducted with Bitcoin cryptocurrency, which aided in protecting user identities. All right. So we got a documentary here. Um, Angie, you want to tell them about the documentary that we're going to get into here a little bit? Um, it basically explains everything about um, how Ross Ulbricht built this whole... Um, uh, like network thing like mar- yeah marketplace um it, this was a marketplace site that was operating in the dark web so i don't know if you guys know but if you do your research you will know that there is a lot of federal agents um like um i don't know how to say it but they they like oh al- they are always there like checking if somebody's doing like oh illegal yeah yeah, shit. yeah yeah so they have their their tools and like and their ways to find these people that do this and you i don't i have never tried the dark web ever but i don't want to i don't want to do it but if you research up at least a little bit you'll find that it's really like you find horrible stuff there they don't only sell drugs they, they, they you can find how to buy like an organ crazy yeah, stuff there so yeah liver so yeah get a liver buy one get one free yeah yeah it's the dark web yeah they sell kids. That's where people f- that do like C, C B, um, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing we can't say. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, they they do it there. So <laughs> that's like the main the main. And stuff. that's why he got such a heavy sentence because he facilitated yep. all that on the website. Yep. Even though he wasn't the one that was actually selling it, the fact that he facilitated it is what they're going after. Yep. And I believe the the main agency that that goes after these people is the FBI. The yeah, FBI. HSI does it too. Um, if you look when they shut the website down they had the uh, um, Homeland Security seal and they had the FBI seal mm-hmm. because F- FBI, uh, HSI is really big on cyber crime as well as uh, piracy because they're selling a lot of bootleg shit yeah. on there as well uh, 
But you know, like I told y'all before, I've I've given I've told you guys this that HSI is terrible at marketing itself. Uh, it's not it's not uncommon for HSI to do a case. FBI comes in after the fact, and then they take the case down, and everyone thinks it's an FBI case because HSI is terrible at fucking marketing themselves. Um, it's one of the it's one of the things actually. Like if I ever went back, I would tell them like y'all need a better online presence. You guys need to fucking like I would run the social media. <laughs> like yeah. y'all are fucking <laughs> trash with this shit. Like it's fucking terrible. Like the one thing that the FBI does really really well that other agencies don't is they know how to market themselves. They know how to keep themselves relevant in the movies. They know how to keep themselves relevant in pop culture. They do documentaries where um, they give insights to old cases uh, so people can learn. Uh, that's one thing that they're really, really fucking good at. The other agencies need to learn uh, how to do. You know, DEA is getting better at it, um, but HSI, absolutely terrible. ATF, absolutely terrible. Um, you know, ATF is even worse. Like, they just have negative stigmas pretty much. You know, Fast and Furious, um, you know, these types of th big cases, people that know the, th the Waco siege. Like, <laughs> when you think ATF, it's like terrible shit, you know. Um, the Bureau has this bad shit too. But, right, at least they have. Um, Good shit as well. You know, they have a... The, the, the H, uh, FBI nowadays is getting a bad rap for all yeah. the dumb shit that they're doing with, you know, uh, political... Um, how do I say this? Being used as a political force almost, especially with the Trump indictments or whatever. But, you know, that's a whole other conversation. Wrong. Um, let's see here. Uh, so, uh, I don't know uh, if this video will get hit with the cover, but if that happens, I'll have another one as a backup that we can also watch. Okay. okay. So, this is the one you want to start with? Yeah, this okay. is like... The internet's favorite drug lord. And this comes from... Let's give a shout out to the uh, the um, the creator here. Uh, oh, it's Phil... Ah, Philion? Oh. Why? What happened? Oh, Why? I didn't know it was this nigga, man. Why? What happened? Yeah, he's not really... Uh... Oh. Look, I'm not even going to be a hater. Because I, I, I didn't see this. Uh, Angie picked this. Oh, um, yeah. What happened? <laughs> I'm so confused right now. I'm so sorry. What happened? Oh, man. Now you didn't know. You didn't know. Let's go ahead and use the other one. That's funny. Use the other one, man. That, oh, this is like OG. OG. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he took a lot of shit about us. Before, like, three, like man, oh, well, no, late, it's no, three years ago. Yeah, late 2020. Like, like, yeah, late 2020. late 2020. Yeah, he made some videos talking shit. A lot of... Oh, a lot of people wouldn't know. Yeah. A lot you were of people be wouldn't. Like, yeah. 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 Give him a like. But Angie ain't gonna know that shit. She ain't gonna know that. Give him a like. Give him a follow. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you that nigga, that nigga's a hater, bro. Hey, yo, fuck him, bro. Yeah, man. He's a hater, man. <laughs> you almost He's follow a him and subscribe. Hater. Oh. Yeah. You almost like the video and subscribe. Yeah, well, I, hey, I'm surprised because normally what he does is he just makes videos talking shit about people. Yeah. That's normally what he does. Well, he made like a whole documentary on these guys, so it's kind of cool, though. Um, all right. Well, <laughs> hey, man, I, I hope he continues to do that instead of just bashing people all day because that's what he normally does is just bash people all day. Um, but yeah, we'll use this one. Uh, who's this one from? Newsthink? All right. We cannot News use that either. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, no, we can use Newsthink. Oh, yeah, yeah, we good. Oh, we good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. W backup. On October 1st. Yeah, go ahead. W backup. <laughs> yeah. W backup, yeah. <laughs> and this was shorter anyway, so. Yeah, this is shorter. But he's a woman, though. 2013. Woman? What? Nah, it's okay. A <laughs> woman? <laughs> In San Francisco. Yeah, I know how you guys are. They arrested 29-year-old so. Ross Ulbricht. Ulbricht ran the largest, most sophisticated online market for illegal drugs in history. He named it Silk Road, a reference to the ancient trade routes that connected China to Europe, beginning in the 2nd century BC. Ulbricht hoped to create his own modern-day marketplace, except his would sell hardcore drugs and other illegal goods. Over the two years and 10 months that Silk Road operated, federal prosecutors say it processed nearly 214 million in sales using Bitcoin. The site operated on a hidden part of the internet called the dark web. Prosecutors say a journal the FBI found on Ulbricht's computer stated he wanted you to create go, a website could go one, where people one, could one buy X, anything bro. anonymously with no trail whatsoever. Sure? Yeah, 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 you could go 1X. Okay. ...whoever that could lead back to them. Unfortunately for Ulbricht, he did leave a trail of digital breadcrumbs that ultimately took him down and his empire with it. Ulbricht was born on March 17, 1984 in Austin, Texas. He was a Boy Scout, attaining the highest rank of Eagle Scout, just uh, like his Austin, dad Austin, Texas, just so y'all know, he by had the a way, happy childhood. Um, one of the fastest growing cities in the United States for the past, like, you know, 15 years or whatever, Austin has constantly been in, like, the top 10 cities. Um, really bad traffic, though. Underrated. People don't know how bad the traffic is in Austin. Um, funny story. Um, I remember I had an arrest warrant for a guy 
This is back like 2014, 2015-ish. I had a arrest warrant for a guy, and they, um, yeah, we're going back in time right now. And, um, you know, as you guys know, I was in Laredo, Texas. Laredo is about three hours south of Austin on uh, Interstate Highway 35. And he got arrested in Travis County, which, if I'm not mistaken, Travis County is where Austin is located. Uh, San Antonio is in Bear County, and then uh, Austin is in Travis County. He got arrested in a, in a little rinky-dick town outside of Austin. Um, and they called me and said, hey, we got your, because whenever you have an arrest warrant on somebody, right, they call the agency that has the arrest warrant on them to see if it's still valid. And they call, hey, we got your guy in custody here, blah, blah, blah. Um, we see that there's a federal arrest warrant from blah, 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 blah. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely, you know, obviously we're going to honor that. So I fucking, you know, jumped in with my guy from DEA, and we drove all the way up to Austin, Texas. And, uh, you know, and we went to go get him and bring him to court and shit like that. And I'll never forget the traffic, how bad it was, bro, because there's one main highway that goes through Austin, and it's uh, Interstate 35. I know there was another highway that goes around Austin, so you don't have to go through the traffic. But the thing with Austin, Texas, is that it's been... Basically, the city grew too fast, uh, and the infrastructure has not caught up to the population explosion. Okay, um, it's been growing for a significant amount uh, of years. Well, sorry, it's been growing exponentially um, for years now, and the infrastructure never caught up. And now, right, you got people like Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Google. Uh, oh, fuck, I forget what other tech company moved out there to Austin, Texas. But big tech, a lot of a lot of them left. Silicon Valley and went over to Texas for obviously more attractive taxes, uh, better cost of living, etc. Uh, not as woke, and um, you know Austin now is super. It's a little bit more liberal now. I would I would consider Austin one of the few places in Texas that isn't really Texas because it's kind of woke over there. Um, but yeah, uh, great city. Um, stay away from Sixth Street guys at night can be pretty dangerous. Um, but yeah, one, I would say one of the worst traffic's. One of the worst traffic traffic in the country by far. People always complain about Houston and L.A. and New York. Austin might be worse. And the reason why is because there's so many people that live there compared to the infrastructure that's there. Because the city is – the infrastructure for the city is, like, really for only a few hundred thousand people. But there's a lot of people that live there now. So, yeah. So that was a funny story. Uh, their courthouse is nice, though. I, well, I remember uh, – because <laughs> – after I drove, because, you know, as you guys know, when you arrest someone, you have to bring him in front of a magistrate judge within 24 hours. I brought him in front of the judge, presented him, whatever it may be. He gets remanded to the marshals, right, because he was a flight risk. And then at this point, it's like 3, 4 p.m. in the afternoon, you know, and at that point, that's rush hour, right, in, in, in big cities like this. Uh, so I said, fuck it. I just ended up staying the night because it was just, it would have taken me way too long to get back down south to um, to Laredo. But, uh, yeah, that's my – and then also I, I rode in Austin a few years. Uh, my first year in college, we went to Austin for a training trip. I remember it was fucking cold. Holy shit. We went in, like, December thinking it was going to be warm. It was cold, dude. But, um, yeah, nice place. I like it. Um, a little woke now. It's not what it used to be, but uh, good place. And some of the most expensive real estate uh, now as well, one of the fastest-growing markets for real estate. It exploded after uh, the pandemic. So, anyway. Shout out Kumo and Camino. Shout out to y'all. Growing up an easygoing hipster but serious student who scored 1,460 on his SATs within the 96th percentile and got a full ride to the University of Texas at Austin, where he studied physics. He then won another full scholarship for a master's at Penn State in material science and engineering. It was at Penn that he evolved into a hardcore libertarian, a political philosophy that advocates individualism and minimal state involvement in people's lives. He was a fan and follower of libertarian economist Ludwig von Mises, who opposed government interference in the economy. When then-presidential candidate Mitt Romney asked what is America's greatest challenge, Ulbricht responded like this on his YouTube channel. You know, but I think the most important thing is getting us out of the United Nations. Ulbricht wanted to create a world free from institutional or government control. That mindset led him to create Silk Road in January 2011. You couldn't type in a normal web address to get to Silk Road or use a normal web browser. You needed software called Tor that works as a web browser. Tor was developed by the U.S. Navy as a way of communicating privately over the internet. It conceals the real IP address of computers on the network Ludwig to hide the identity of the user, and it can't be traced by the government. Pause. Silk Road's... Oh, go ahead. Ludwig von, Ludwig von Mises. Okay. Uh, Ludwig von, von... Von Mises. Oh, who's that? No, um, I know that, but like, yeah. did he get mentioned in the documentary or something? Or? Yeah, yeah, he was just mentioned in there. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay, okay. I get what you're saying. The guy, the libertarian guy? Yeah. Oh, well, interesting because... I, I just looked up early life. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Karl Marx as well. The father of communism? Uh, <laughs> the father of communism. <laughs> yeah, also. Yep. Uh, Bolsheviks? Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. All right, we keep going. My fuck my head up. Yeah, man. That early life tells you a lot, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's keep going. Oh, okay. There you go. Address used a bunch of random numbers and letters that ended with dot onion. Ulbricht made the site by teaching himself how to code. When he needed more help, he reached out on a Bitcoin community forum, writing, I'm looking for the best and brightest IT pro in the Bitcoin community to be the lead developer in a venture-backed Bitcoin startup company. Anyone interested was to contact him via his email. Pause. Ross Ulbricht at G... Bills, I want to get your take on this because you do coding. Um, obviously, we'll watch a little bit more, but I want to get your take on it, like how difficult this feat is that he's about to embark on. As far as from like a coding perspective, bro, it's damn near. It's pretty impossible, honestly. It, it, it was damn near impossible at the time. He did a great job. He mm. found like super genius people to come together and make Silk Road. If you know Tor yeah, Browser, you know Tor Browser. Technology yeah. way ahead of its time, bro. Of course, bro. He mm. used bitcoins. Like it's saying that he used the bitcoin. Like to it, it sounds genius, bro. And around 2011, that's that's exactly when Bitcoin was just about like getting yeah. getting really up there. So. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 It was still. I wonder what was Bitcoin in 2011. What was one Bitcoin? Can we Google it real quick? It was probably like a hundred dollars. Well, let's, let's let's yeah, let's see what Bitcoin was uh, in in twenty eleven. Like the the cost for one Bitcoin. Nowadays, right? Let me look here and see what the, the cost of Bitcoin is it now. It was thirty dollars. It was thirty dollars in twenty eleven. Thirty. Yo. Okay. Compared to today, it is. Bro, did you hear about the guy that bought like a Domino's pizza with like ten Bitcoin? A Domino's pizza. He bought a Domino's pizza like in two thousand eight or two thousand nine with like. Well, like 10 Bitcoin or some shit like that. That's crazy. Yeah. Now Bitcoin's worth 37000 As of this moment right now, 10.30 p.m. Eastern stupid. Standard Time on November 26th, 2013, 2023, sorry, 10 years later, um, it is now worth $37,244. You know, and, Bitcoin. Isn't that crazy, bro? Stop you, Bitcoin. Get a dollar market yeah, for man. cryptocurrency. Yeah, yeah, man. Facts. <laughs> Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, someone in the chat, uh, yeah, some of y'all know, how much did he spend on that goddamn pizza? You can Google it real quick, Bill's on the side. Or, or Mo, can you fact check it? I don't know how much he spent on that fucking pizza because it was crazy, bro. If you had to save that shit. You know what I just remembered, 10,000 Bitcoin? Bro. No, y'all a cap. Uh, yeah. He didn't spend no fucking 10k Bitcoin. T Bitcoin was like, you, Bitcoin was less than a penny at a point. I'm positive it probably was. God damn. Yeah, bro. I could believe that. Definitely. Yo. And you know what's so funny? I remember like Silk Road Mo, actually, double check. Silk Road helped Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in such a big way. He said so, it was in May 22nd, 2010, buying two Supreme pizzas. And how much did it cost? Um, 10,000 BTC. Wow. Mo, that sounds like the shit you'll do, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. So in 2013, which was when the site closed because they found this guy and they got he got arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin, what the highest, um, yeah, the, the highest uh, price that it was, it was a thousand dollars, a thousand and a hundred dollars, so eleven $1 hundred. Um, 2013 at the highest. Yeah. Okay. Today's equivalent is 266 million. Yo! I hope those 266 million dollar pizzas were good, man. Bumbaka. God damn. What were they, Papa John's? Papa John's. Papa retard. Trash. God damn. Worth Trash. it. Yeah, that's Bro. exactly what I do. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Bro, Those I, are some expensive pizzas, bro, man. I, and I uh, thought I was fat, bro. <laughs> Yo, holy shit. Oh, man. Would, All right. I wouldn't even buy that shit at my fattest, bro. You know what's bro. crazy? When they closed this thing down, the whole site was costing um, 9,500 Bitcoins. When, when, when 9,000. 9, the site, Silk Road. It had 9,500 Bitcoin yeah, in it? Oh, yeah. the government probably sees that shit. So what would that be equal? 9,500 Bitcoin? Yeah, Mo, I, I cannot say the number. It's too long. Okay, Mo, can you multiply it for us real quick? 9,500 9, Bitcoin times 38K. Oh, that's a lot. That's, that's going to be a lot, bro. That's going to be no, a lot. No, they they site was making sales of, of that amount. Of oh, that amount. Uh, so, every day? I mean. Every day it was doing that? So this is the amount, the amount in dollars. I don't know if you can spell that number. It's too long. What the fuck? <laughs> the fact that's like that a that trillion. Is, yeah. 
Bro. Yeah. I can't even. What? The, the math does not compute. Or, Bro. no, hold so on. That's, that's the Bitcoin? Yeah. $2. God damn. All right. That's yeah. a lot. Not All right. Let's dollars. go back to the doc. Hold on one second. Coming up right now. Email.com. Making his email public would later come back to oh, haunt Oh, yeah, him. that's L. He also got coding help from a buddy of his from undergrad, Richard Bates. Albrecht had no choice but to eventually tell his friend what he was up to. He also told his girlfriend, Julia V. One day, he showed her the psychedelic mushrooms he was growing and selling as a starter product on his new website. Silk Road would eventually be a marketplace for all kinds of drugs, weed, cocaine, LSD, ecstasy, heroin. This fit Albrecht's libertarian mindset. He believed that whatever someone decided to put in their body was their choice and no one else's, least of all, the government's. Albrecht also believed everyone had the right to self-defense when guns started appearing on Silk Road. However, he realized he didn't need the controversy and soon took weapons off the site. After getting his business Pause. up and running, he turned his attention to a- um, That's one thing I'll disagree with as far as like, because um, I have a lot of libertarian stances as well as far as like from a political standpoint, but that's one thing I don't agree with is like just letting people use drugs because the problem is that when you, um, illicit drugs come with inherent problems that are dangerous to society. What ends up happening is you're always going to end up with a black market of people that are selling the drugs and are willing to use violence to um, distribute said drugs, right? Um, now, I know some of you guys might say, well, if you just leg regulate it, it'll be fine. There's always going to be a way that criminal enterprises are going to be able to bring in harder, purer, um, cheaper drugs than the pharmaceuticals, etc. So you're never going to really r remove that street element from drug trafficking. I mean, look at look at this. Marijuana is legal, right, in a lot of states, but there's still illicit marijuana trade all over the country. Um, and then I think Portland, if I'm not mistaken, just recently decriminalized um, drugs, and crime has actually went up from doing that. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I know they say, oh, no, I'll just let people use drugs. It's a personal decision, blah, blah, blah. The problem is that drug use comes with inherent problems that are not just limited to the actual drug use. That's the problem with um, with it, you know. And I can tell you guys that from being on the front lines, right? People might say, "Oh, Myron, you're biased, blah blah." blah. Well, not really. I just see that um, the drug trade comes with inherent um, societal issues and uh, bring presents societal dangers just from it existing. So that's just kind of what it is. That's why I don't think that uh, legalizing drugs is ever a good move. And then on top of that. Making it uh, legal and making it more available to the general public isn't a good look in general because m more people are going to be, oh, let's experiment, let's try it. So um, I think demonizing it from a societal standpoint, making it illegal from a society standpoint helps a lot with deterrence. Um, and then punishing those that traffic it also is a form of deterrence. I know people are going to say, bro, but that doesn't mean anything because they're going to someone else is going to pop up and sell the drugs. That's true, but we shouldn't make it easier for them either, you know. Um, so that's my take on it. Some of you guys might agree. Some of you guys might disagree. Um, but drugs always comes with other problems as well. It's not just the free use of drugs. That's the issue. It's all the other auxiliary problems that come alongside it. Uh, let's go back to the, to the doc. Also, guys, we got about uh, over 3,000 y'all in here between YouTube and Rumble. Do me a favor. Um, can you guys please like the video on YouTube? Uh, and uh, let's get back to it. 682 likes. Yeah. 682. Let's get one to 1,000, guys. Attracting customers, he decided to write a post on a magic mushrooms forum called the Shroomery, pretending to be someone who happened to come across Silk Road. He used the username Altoid, posting, I'm thinking of buying off it, but wanted to see if anyone here had heard of it and could recommend it. He included a link with instructions on how to access Silk Road. He did the same on a Bitcoin community forum about buying and selling heroin, describing Silk Road as an anonymous Amazon.com. It wasn't long before buyers showed up. To limit scams, there was a rating system for sellers similar to Amazon reviews. If a seller sold bad drugs and got a poor rating, it would hurt their sales. <laughs> the drugs arrived by mail with fake return addresses. They'd be slipped inside CD and DVD cases. Some sellers got even more creative and put them in little ripples of cardboard. The packages had printed mailing labels rather than handwritten ones to look like they came from a legitimate business. Ironically, that backfired. The printed labels actually attracted the suspicion of authorities. In the summer of 2011, Department of Homeland Security agent Jared Duryagian hey, learned man. of a small oh, meat package pause. with the printed. Oh yeah, he's he's a, this guy's HSI. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So see again, terrible marketing from HSI. 
They're just saying DHS special agent. They don't know that he's he's from Homeland Security Investigations. But hey, that's that's you know, ICE and DHS not doing a good job of marketing the agency. It is what it is. Let's keep going. Address going through Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. It contained a single pink pill of ecstasy, which uh, was also suspicious. Okay, because pause. usually they shipped in. All right, guys. So we're gonna see. Uh, um, you guys are going to see something called a controlled delivery. I'm going to explain it to you guys here in a little bit what a controlled delivery is. Y'all about to get some sauce today, baby. Welcome to Fed Reacts. I've done these myself, so I'll explain what this is after they go through it. So uh, let's run it, and then I'll tell you when to pause. Bulk. Soon, two or three packages begin arriving, then 50, then up to 1,000 a day. Many came from the Netherlands, which is a notorious source of drugs. Agent Dur Yegian visited an address where one of the packages was to be delivered, chatted with the roommate of the buyer, who said the drugs came from a site called Silk Road. Dur Yegian had never heard of Silk Road before. He did some digging online and came across an article written by Gawker journalist Adrian Chen in June 2011. Chen wrote, Making small talk with your pot dealer sucks. Buying cocaine can get you shot. What if you could buy and sell drugs online, like books or light bulbs? Now you can. Welcome to Silk Road. The article attracted 3 million views and put Silk Road on the map. All right, pause. Not only did Silk Road... So, okay. Um, so, as you guys can see, the package came in through the Chicago O'Hare or Airport, and it was intercepted. So, normally, let me go ahead and break down for you guys what this is, okay? Um, whenever a package comes in, right, from foreign, all right, it is subject to customs... A custom search. Remember, guys, at the border, you have no Fourth Amendment right, right, which is basically, you know, the right to privacy or, um, you know, right to... Um, re having a reasonable expectation of privacy. You don't have that when you come into the United States. That's why they're going to search you. That's why they're going to search your packages, everything you come with. Hell, they can even detain your phones and look through your phones, right? You have no expectation of privacy, no Fourth Amendment rights at the border. That includes packages and people. Everything coming into the United States is subject to search by customs. Okay, now that we've established that, this comes into the Chicago O'Hare Airport, okay, in Illinois, and uh, it's obviously subject to customs inspection. CBP officers, Customs and Border Protection officers, the guys with the blue uniforms, okay? And remember, I've explained this to the difference between Border Patrol and the difference between Customs and Border Protection officers, right? They're both under, there's one umbrella, CBP, and then there's two sides to it. There's um, Office of um, Field Operations, and then there's Border Patrol, all right? So it's one umbrella, CBP, wait, wait, DHS, then underneath DHS is CBP, and then underneath CBP, there's two factions. There's CBPO, which is uh, Office of Field Operations, and then Border Patrol, Whenever you're at a valid port of entry, like an airport, a bridge crossing, etc., you're going to have the blue uniform guys there. Anytime you're not at a valid point of entry, a.k.a. you're trying to you know, go across the Rio Grande River or something like that, you're going to see green uniforms, Border Patrol. Give me ones in the chat if that, guys makes, that makes sense to you guys so that I can continue this explanation. Give me ones. And if, it's, and if it doesn't make sense, give me a two, and I'll re-explain that part and then keep going because I want you guys to really understand how this works. And if you're going to put a two, please tell me what is confusing. Don't just put two. Put two and why if you're going to put two. Someone said two because I have ADHD. I just tweeted about that. <laughs> I knew he was going to catch that one. You did just tweet about that. Yeah. You just lack focus, bro. Two because El Myron? Hating. <laughs> Hating. Two because I just got in. Two of the abbreviations. Okay, I'll go through it. Two, I wasn't listening. <laughs> One, no, keep it pushing. Two, I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Misogyny. Let's see here. Two American school systems. <laughs> All right. I think I said two because Al Fresh. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, bro? <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So you got the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, right? Underneath, think of this as Department of Homeland Security's police officers, okay? Customs and Border Protection, okay? Within Customs and Border Protection, there's two factions, okay? You got Border Patrol, green uniform. You got Customs and Border Protection Office of Field Operations, CBP officers, which are blue uniform. When you go to the airport and you travel internationally, the CBP officers, a.k.a. the guys in the blue uniforms, are the ones that check you in. Correct? And then if you're coming in illegally, maybe through 
a southwest border or a, a top border where there isn't a port of entry, like an airport or a, a sanctioned point of entry, you're going to see green uniforms, Border Patrol, okay? So now that we've explained what, C what DHS is, CBP is, and then what Customs and Border Protection is, and then what Border Patrol is, because remember, CBP and Border Patrol are two different things, okay? Since we're at the airport, the airport is a designated port of entry, okay? Packages come in through there. CBP, the guys with the blue uniforms, inspect the packages because they're customs officers, okay? They have customs authority, Title 19. So th when they're searching the packages, if they find something where uh, there's drugs or contraband or whatever it may be, they're going to contact who? Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, all right? Now, HSI, think of them as the detectives for the Department of Homeland Security, okay? They're the investigators. CBP, by law, whenever they catch... Someone trying to smuggle drugs into the country or smuggle illegal aliens or whatever the fuck it is, they have to contact HSI, okay? Because they are not investigators. They are interdiction officers, which means their job is to stop, de to st detect and stop. And then as far as furthering the investigations, that's when they call HSI and they come in and they respond, okay? So HSI comes in and responds, just like this agent saw right here. He probably got a call from CBP, showed up to the airport, saw all these packages, okay? Then at that point, it's up to the agent, the case agent that comes in, whoever's on call, it's up to him if he wants to do something called a controlled delivery. And what a controlled delivery is, guys, is the package that has a contraband is obviously destined to go somewhere. So what you're going to do is you're going to allow the package to go to its destination to identify conspirators in the drug network or in the criminal activity. Okay? So you deliver the package. A lot of times it's going to be an HSI agent, you know, dressed undercover, whatever it may be, maybe in a DHL or a UPS, whatever the fuck it is. He's going to drop the package off, and they're going to wait. They're going to set a tripwire in the box. As soon as that individual opens it, they're going to bust in, arrest him, and then try to flip him. Okay, Flipping is when you try to get someone to cooperate so you can identify other members of the conspiracy. As you guys know, um, the drug trade is a compartmentalized, large-scale conspiracy where you have people that are um, distributors, transporters, um, money launderers. Uh, you know, sources of supply, etc. Okay, you have different roles in a drug traffic organization, and it's very um, compartmentalized where individuals might not necessarily know who's in the drug trafficking organization all the time. So you ask them, where were these drugs destinated? Especially when they get a big package, nine out of ten times, it's not there for their personal use. They're, you, they're going to distribute it to other people. So they're getting it from abroad. They get it. Now you pretty much have identified someone who more than likely is going to be a regional supplier to some degree. You try to get him to flip. Hey, where was it supposed to go? Okay, I was going to distribute it to here. I was going to distribute it to here. I was going to drop it here. I was going to give it to one of my workers, whatever. And then it's up to the case agent how far they want to take it and how um, how much they want to expend the investigation. That is how a controlled delivery is done. Give me ones in the chat if that made sense. Give me twos in the chat if it didn't make sense. It could be more complicated than that, but I was going very surface level there. And you could do a controlled delivery with anything. You could do it with... I, hell, I did a controlled delivery one time with illegal aliens, which that's a whole other story. I might have to do an episode for y'all on that one. That one was wild. Um, but you can do it with anything that's contraband. Drugs, sensitive military parts that shouldn't be being moved. Give me If you're going to put a two in the chat and you're not confused, give me a two as to why you're confused. Is it two? Because I'm a PhD. I'm a PhD. <laughs> Nick said, too, I'm Chris's former student. <laughs> oh, man, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> Nick said, too, because Mo is breathing like Billy, Biggie. And so I said, too, because Mo is fat and rumble. All right. <laughs> school shooter, we see you. Or school scooter. School scooter, we see you. Don't <laughs> niggas is he was the first one to say the Chris joke. Okay. Niggas said, All right. Niggas said two. That Don DeMarco for you, bro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Someone said two because I watched Don After Hours. Two because Chris is a fat bum. Yo, man. All right. He said two be continued. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. <laughs> 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 All right. Hey, yo, W chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was funny, man. You guys in the chat, bro. All right. Uh, let's keep going with the documentary. But that's how a control delivery typically works, guys. Okay? 
And you can obviously involve other agencies as well when you do these controlled deliveries. So. <laughs> Soon attract the attention of thousands of drug dealers and buyers, but also politicians like Senator Chuck Schumer, who called for the site to be shut down. The U.S. government was concerned, but not only about drug sales. As Nick Bilton detailed in his book, American Kingpin, Homeland Security agent Duryagian feared that a terrorist organization could enter the country and then buy something from Silk Road to harm Americans. He convinced the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago to take on the case. As Silk Road came into the spotlight, Ulbricht's college friend Richard, who helped him with programming, said he urged him Pause to shut quick. it down. Giving you a little bit more sauce. Also, guys, I need you guys to like the video um, because we only got 869 likes. So I'm giving you guys, I just explained to you guys what a controlled delivery is. 99% of people on YouTube can't explain that to you because they've never done one. I've done one. I've done multiple, actually, controlled deliveries. Um, the other thing I want to say also, guys, is um, notice how he said he had to go to the U.S. Attorney's Office and convince him to take the case. I said this before. I want to one more time for all the new viewers. Federal prosecutors, guys, are divas a lot of times. They don't have to take every case that comes across their desk. This is why f the feds almost never lose, because the AUSAs, Assistant United States Attorneys, by the way, not to be confused with Assistant District Attorneys, ADAs, uh, which are their federal counterparts, AUSAs have the privilege of taking on cases that they want to take. They don't have to take on cases, uh, all cases. They only take on the ones that they want, that they feel that they can win. Okay? So with that said, he obviously had to go in there and say, look, I've identified this or this um, online website that is transporting drugs, etc. This is a national security risk because they can go ahead and um, traffic other things outside of drugs, you know, exploitation of children, weapons, etc. And this can be a problem. Uh, so we need you guys to take the case. And ended up, luckily, the U.S. attorney ended up taking the case. But I say all that, guys, because I've di I've been in those boardrooms with, you know, me, my supervisor, and my ASAC, and then I'm sitting across from the U.S. attorney uh, 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 AU uh, and, you know, two or three of his best AUSAs, and I'm talking to them about a case, and I'm like, look, we need you guys to do X, Y, Z, because a lot of the times the United States Attorney's Office they don't want to take cases that they're not 100% sure that they're going to win. They only take cases that they know that they're going to win. This is why the feds never lose, right? They might say something like, oh, just give it to the state or we're not interested, blah, blah, blah. They absolutely have the right of refusal. So um, obviously this agent had to go ahead and convince the U.S. Attorney's Office to take the case. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we highlight that um, because a lot of people think that the feds take every single case that comes across their table. The, door, the answer is no, they actually don't. They take a very small percentage of cases. The average AUSA in the United States only carries about 15 cases, guys, versus if you take the average ADA in a major city, they have hundreds of cases. Why? They're dealing with DUIs. They're dealing with everything. For, you know, they're dealing with fucking dis a stupid disorderly conduct case all the way up to murder. Right. Because the state has a wide array of crimes that they could prosecute and local police are making way more arrests than federal agents. So that is why their case backlog, the state is almost always way more backlogged than the feds are. OK, um, typically they don't want to allocate federal resources to small level crimes. They only typically go after felonies, not misdemeanors. OK. Uh, all right. Let's uh, let's continue on. Give me one in the chat if that made sense for y'all as far as like discre prosecutorial discretion. This is one of those more educational podcasts today, my friends. I want to make sure that y'all get it. But let's keep going with it. Bills, please. Ulbricht and his girlfriend, Julia, broke up soon after the launch of Silk Road. She said one of the reasons was because of the insane pressure she felt to keep his secret. Ulbricht lied to her and Richard, telling them he had sold the business to someone else and no longer had anything to do with it. He moved to Australia for a while and lived with his sister in Sydney. Around this time, he was contacted through the site by a person going by the name Variety Jones. <laughs> Variety Jones became his right-hand man and someone Ulbricht <laughs> described as a real mentor. Neither knew the other's true identity. Uh, Variety Jones pointed out the gaping holes in security on Silk Road. Ulbricht decided to encrypt all the files on his computer. This is the actual laptop he used to run Silk Road. He put in a kill switch that would automatically shut down his device by pressing a predetermined key in case authorities rushed in at the last minute. He also prepared an escape plan if needed, including destroy laptop, hard drive, find a place to live on Craigslist for cash with a new identity. Variety Jones came up with Albrecht's infamous pseudonym on Silk Road, Dread Pirate Roberts, a reference to the fearsome captains from the film The Princess Bride who passed the name on to a chosen successor. In the same way, Ulbricht hoped to one day pass on the name Dread Pirate Roberts to someone who might succeed him. Variety Jones got him to see how big Silk Road could grow to be. Ulbricht wrote in a personal journal disclosed by prosecutors, Silk Road is going to become a phenomenon and at least one person will tell me about it, unknowing that I was its creator. 
In two short years, Silk Road grew to more than 100,000 users with sales of nearly 214 million, including 13.2 million in commissions for Silk Road, according to prosecutors. The feds were left scratching their heads as they still had no clue who was the mastermind behind Silk Road. Who was this dread pirate Roberts? Who was the captain of the ship? It became somewhat of a competition amongst the various government agencies to be the one to identify Dread Pirate Roberts. To better understand how Silk Road operated, Department of Homeland Security agent Duryegian posed as a buyer and made 52 undercover purchases. He also seized thousands of packages, linked certain sales back to their source, and arrested several people. Pause. His biggest get came. And by linking those packages, he did control deliveries to do so. And then as far as like doing undercover purchases, guys, um, you know, this was probably was a big case, so they probably had an under, 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 undercover program, and they were getting funds, right, through the Treasury, whatever it may be, to do these undercover buys. And each of those p things that they get, it's a piece of evidence that they obviously keep uh, for the investigation. Um, do we have any chats? Yeah. Okay, let's hit some of these chats, and then uh, we'll keep going. Uh, give me one second. Uh, guys, also do me a favor, man. Like the video, guys, because we got um, 1,800 y'all in here, man. You guys could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us on FedRex, man, which we appreciate. Please like the video. Let's hit uh, 1,500 likes if we can. Uh, w1811, why change the name? I found FNF in the Tates a year ago. Thanks for bringing the value, WMO, and the team. Uh, I changed the name because it was easier to find um, FedRex than Fed1811. Um, yeah, and then having numbers in your name isn't really a, a way to go. And very few people know that 1811 is the job series code for special agents. So I said, you know what, it's going to make it a little bit more easier for people to find. Um, and then also, whenever people search FedIt, they get, like, Reddit links. Yeah. So that's another reason, too. It's harder to find a channal. Yeah. Uh, Trump gains 2024. Angie's gains first VP lady. Moen, Department of Comida and Music. Blitz, Department of Laughs and Dreads. IC, Department of what? Punching. Shermutas. Need that Myron in Espanol. Ja, 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 ja. Okay. Oh, that's coming, guys. <laughs> Myron. <laughs> Myron, it's ha ha ha. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why do you keep saying ja, ja, ja. It just sounds better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the expression for Espanol is coming to, like, by us. Goku the Goat. Go on back. What, go back. What is that? Uh, LOL, what hypocrite? I had eight hour DBZ stream, but talk about me, but you played Overwatch, nerd. When have I denied being a nerd? Bro, his name is Goku. <laughs> Goku, I got you, bro. What the it hell? It doesn't matter what you think! What? When did I deny being a nerd? I'm confused. <laughs> All right. <laughs> must be new here. Uh, WFNF for always providing value. The Fed Reacts channel pulling the same numbers as Rice Gum, who has 10 million followers. Eh, yeah. They're trying to give you guys some value so that you guys learn. Ludwig von Mises, yes, he's one of them, boy, them boys, but he's actually base. He debunked socialism for real, for real. He get a pass on my book, Mrs.org. Ooh, yeah, I, I, I give him a pass. Better than Karl Marx. Uh, $10 for you to watch Dave Smith, another good them boys, on Rogan. Posted on Thanksgiving. It mostly talks about the bang, bang conflict in the desert right now. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Bang, bang conflict. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, man. I, guys, there's a, lot of, bro, there's a bunch of them boys that are fucking solid people, man. Um... Whale alert, 8,200 BTC, uh, oh, okay, is, is, is equivalent to $252,469,449 uh, transfer from Silk Road seizure to unknown new wallet. This happened on July 12th. God damn. damn. Okay. Damn. Oh, Silk Road yeah, somebody got a bag, I guess. Anything else? Yeah, there, we got a okay. stream labs. Shout out to all my ninjas in the chat, guys. Guys, let's get to at least, you know, 1.5 <laughs> likes on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. As you guys know, we get a lot of hate, and we also get uh, we're, this channel is demonetized. So I'd really appreciate if you guys like the video. Don't got to donate a dollar to the stream. I only ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you like content like this, this is the best true crime channel on YouTube. Um, okay. Sneak on Marin. Jokes about Africans' floor eating habits and them boys owning news organizations. Angie immediately laughs. W racist Angie. Also, W Angie and I see for putting the dark elf near Fresh Side. Yes, that was funny. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is Fresh, and that's Myron. So yes. In case you guys didn't know. Yeah. They know. I, I, they, they definitely know. Dude's name is Goku Sandals. Okay. Uh, Myron, it's awesome you're nerding out about uh, Overwatch and play McCree. Do an Overwatch Fed React stream explaining the case on why they changed McCree's name to Cassidy. I don't know why they changed it to Cassidy. They changed it to did Cass they change it to Cassidy? Oh, they did change it to really? Cassidy. Oh, oh my God. A, what? Bro, I still call him fucking McCree. McCree that's what yeah. I thought. I thought it was still McCree. Damn, bro. That's how, that's how, damn. damn. That's how behind I am. I didn't even, because I was looking for like, I was on the internet yesterday. I was like looking for new um, McCree internet. footage, like to see how people play him nowadays, because obviously, you know, 
Um, I played him a certain way when I was playing Overwatch back in the day. You know, I obviously a good McCree, right? Is a mid. You're 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 playing mid rage. You're staying around your healers. You're protecting your healers. So when a flanker or some shit like that tries to come in, you flash bang headshot those motherfuckers and kill them, right? Because if you you know a headshot is 140 points damage. Two headshots, pretty much you're killing everybody in the game except for like tanks. So um, so yeah, I I uh, hmm, interesting. No wonder I couldn't find him. They call him Cassidy. I wonder why they did that. Someone in the chat, can y'all tell me why they changed his name to Cassidy? That's kind of weird. I would love to know. Yeah, I kind of want to know. Watch it be for some fucking woke reason. It probably is. Probably for some woke reason. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, we got uh, Myron. Did you forget about the call-in show again, sir? Hmm. You ready to see this one? I don't know if we should do the call-in show tonight. I mean, we kind of did tell them we would do it. Yeah. Mm. We missed it the last mm. week. <sighs> Another time. We'll do it next week. <laughs> I'm already feeling nasty. We did yeah, it I mean, Friday though. They had a chance. They had a chance. They had all night Friday. Y'all had all night. We did five hours. Y'all know I could have done seven hours. <laughs> five hours. <laughs> we had a calling show for five hours straight, bro. Y'all, we going but we gonna make it happen still on the Federiacs, bro. So, but let's give us some time. We got you. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. I mean, if you ask for likes, maybe. Yeah, if we get the likes up to 1,700, I'll open the phone lines. There we go. There we go. If we get the likes up to 1,700, 1,800, what we're currently at right now, I'll open up the phone lines. Right now, we got 1K. Let's see what happens. Ooh, ooh, w, w. Two, two, 2K? Uh, 2K likes? Uh, I don't know if we get, we got 1,800 watching. If we get 1,800 likes, we get almost 100% oh, engagement. Okay. I'll open up the phone lines for y'all ninjas. They're monkey 24 hours too like 20, uh, 24 right. and a half. Okay, let's see here. Mm -hmm. What's up next? Uh, Othon goes, I'm here at TJ Fridays working, sending emails and watching you guys. And one of the waitresses asked me, do you watch Fresh and Fit? I'm like, of course. She says she watches with her man. Shout out to our black queen. Shout out to you, bro. And shout out to her as well. Tell her I said thank you for watching the show and supporting. Um, it always makes me very happy. Pause when couples watch our show together. BC better than real estate. <laughs> Even after the Silk Road and FTX, Bitcoin stands strong. Myron, invest your next mill in BTC and it will become tens of millions. Stop being so risk averse and take some risk. I got a few Bitcoin, my friend. <laughs> I, I, I have Bitcoin. Trust me, I'm in crypto. Um, but it, it, come on, man. For you to say that Bitcoin is better than real estate, you're, you're, you're bro, you're, you're just not. That's that's just that's 100% not true. Um, you're not going to get the same tax benefits from uh, real estate. Sorry, from Bitcoin that you're going to get with real estate. You're not going to get the depreciation. You're not going to get the cost segregation. You're not going to get the um, the cash flow with with um, tenants. Um, you're not going to get the same level of write-offs. You're just, you, like it doesn't even come close as far as um, uh, real estate when it comes to like long-term um, holding. Like, yeah, you might uh, enjoy better appreciation with Bitcoin, right? Assuming that it continues to go up, etc. But if you buy real estate in the right markets, guys, all the houses I bought back back in like 2021, etc., they're all up like 100k now. The one the ones I bought in Florida. So. I mean, you can't borrow against it. You can't get a loan from the bank, right? To uh, and only put twenty five percent down. You can't use leverage to acquire Bitcoin, right? At least not conventionally. So, yeah, bro. I mean, there's a reason why um, real estate has created more millionaires than any other asset class. Now, with that said, I have Bitcoin too. I have crypto as well. I think you should be in every single asset class. But to say that crypto is better than real estate from a holistic standpoint, I disagree. I really disagree. Maybe it might be better from an appreciation standpoint. Right, where you're going to be able to enjoy more appreciation um, over time because Bitcoin is more volatile, so you'll be able to enjoy a bit more appreciation. But at the same time, you can d get a lot of uh, depreciation. It could absolutely lose value as well, right? And you don't get cash flow from cryptocurrency unless like you're you're hedging it or something like that, and that always goes up and down. It's not consistent income all the time. So I disagree with you on that one. But um, crypto is absolutely a good asset class to have. I think everyone should have cryptocurrency in today's day and age. Um, L Fresh, have you done controlled delivery for Cuban cigars? If not, would they even consider it, or do they have bigger fish to fry? Excellent question. Um, I don't see them wasting their time on Cuban cigars doing a controlled delivery unless it was like a ridiculous amount. Maybe it was a high value target. They already have an investigation, and the inv individuals that they're doing the, the the cigars delivering the cigars to are involved in some other criminal activity. Maybe they're terrorists. Maybe they're um, really bad people. Then I could see that, but. Um, the feds aren't going to do like a cigarette smuggling or a cigar case a lot of the times unless the individuals um, are really 
um, involved in some shit. Matter of fact, go watch the episode I did. I did an episode, guys, on um, a cigarette smuggling case that Hezbollah was involved in in North Carolina back in the 90s. It was a really good breakdown. Actually, one of my favorite episodes that I did. Uh, go check that out if you guys want to see um, uh, a scenario where uh, it's a case... Uh, uh, a scenario where a charge that normally would never be charged was applied in this case because the targets were um, obviously involved in some very nefarious activity. So, yeah, go, go check that out, guys. Um, it's going to be um, Fed. Just type in Fed Reacts Hezbollah and you guys will see it. Um, keep chilling. Is that Border Patrol at the place where they check your car when you come in from Laredo, McAllen, Brownsville area? No, that is CBP. They're going to be in the blue uniforms. Border Patrol is going to be green uniforms unless you're at a checkpoint uh, 29 miles from the border or whatever it may be. Uh, Keem chilling. Uh, what else we got here? We got King Darula. Hey, Martin, when you develop enough passive income from your assets generally, what does your active income come from? Does it become entrepreneurial by nature or do you revert to a supervisor position? In other words, what do you do after financial freedom? Uh, well, that's the key word in freedom, my friend, whatever you want. Um, you can continue to do your entrepreneurial ventures and keep your active income coming in. I suggest you keep doing your entrepreneurial ventures and, um, excuse me, um, and, you know, still continue to acquire earned income because the more earned income you get, the more you can invest into your passive income and just continue to grow that passive income to the point where you're making as much as your earned income. But um, but that's my goal personally. I'm trying to get to a point where my passive income is pretty much equivalent to my earned income. And that's going to take a while. I'm not going to lie to you all. Uh, but that's where you want to be, guys, so that if, God forbid, something happens, you're you're, you're making as much money passively right as you did when you were actively working okay god forbid you get sick you need to take time off you need to take care of a family member whatever it may be you're still able to provide for the people you care about um regardless of you not working that's the that's the whole key of being financially free guys being able to do whatever you want to do and being able to be around those that you love and take care of those that you love uh whether you're working or not um anything else no that's all no? We're Caught up. all right let's get back to the documentary man like the video, guys. Y'all want the phone lines open? Y'all gotta like the video. When you track down a Dread Pirate Roberts employee, a moderator on Silk Road's user forums going by the name Cirrus, he forced her to hand over her account, and then he pretended to be her. Deryegian posing as Cirrus got assignments directly from Dread Pirate Roberts. He wasn't the only federal agent chatting with a Silk Road boss. DEA agent Carl Force was part of a task force in Baltimore that was also investigating. Force used the username Knob and posed as a drug dealer, originally from the Dominican Republic, who smuggled millions of dollars worth of cocaine and heroin into the U.S. every year. He was on friendly terms with Dread Pirate Roberts, who had no idea he was speaking with a DEA agent, an agent who, in a twist to so the pause, tale, quick. turned out to be corrupt. So you guys see here that you got two different agencies working a, the same case, and they don't even know it yet. All right, this is where deconfliction comes in later on, but I'll explain that. But let's let's keep going so I don't interrupt. Force convinced Dread Pirate Roberts to pay him $50,000 in Bitcoin by claiming he had insider information from a government employee. When Force reported the conversation to the DEA, he claimed he never received any payment when, in fact, he funneled the Bitcoin into a personal account. Oh, shit. And believe it or not, a second agent Secret who worked on the guy. same Baltimore task force was also stealing. Secret Service agent Sean Bridges. When Silk Road customer support rep Curtis Clark Green was arrested at his home with a kilo of coke, Bridges used Green's admin access to steal 20,000 Bitcoin from other user accounts. Dread Pirate Roberts thought Green to be responsible for the theft. He wanted to rough him up and got egged on by his mentor, Variety Jones. Pause real quick. Dread Pirate Roberts knew Green's... Mo, do me a favor. Can you double check and see that, that DEA guy force if he was an actual DEA agent or a task force officer? I'm willing to bet he was a task force officer. Um, and then the other guy was a Secret Service agent. I remember when these guys got arrested, man. It was fucking crazy because... Um, you know, it's it's not often that you find uh, corrupt 1811s. Um, you know, it's far and few between. But uh, but yeah, these guys are fucking idiots, obviously, um, thinking that the anonymity of the internet would have saved them. So it is what it is. Uh, let's keep running it. Real identity. Because as a condition for being on Silk Road's payroll, staff had to hand over their government ID. Dread Pirate Roberts turned to Knob, a.k.a. DEA agent Carl Force, to beat Carl up Force. Green. Knob agreed. However, Dread Pirate Roberts then changed his mind and messaged, can you change the order to execute rather than torture? Dread Pirate Roberts said he had, quote, never killed a man or had one killed before, but it is the right move in this case. 
He didn't want to risk Green giving up information to the authorities, for, as he knew he had been arrested when he searched him up sentence online. For, Knob agreed to do yeah, the job for $80,000 in Bitcoin. Ulbricht later for? received photos of a dead DA. Green, except he wasn't really dead. Agent, no. agent 4 staged Green's death, complete with photos of him on the floor, covered in Campbell's Chicken and Stars soup. The <laughs> Dread Pirate Roberts is said to have ordered hits on five others whom he felt threatened by. Silk Road had been prey for blackmailers and extortionists. However, there was no proof that anyone was ever killed. Ulbricht was never charged with murder for hire. The government agencies were still nowhere closer so to figuring out who was Dread Pirate Robert. So we confirmed he was actually an 1811 for DEA. Uh, the Force guy was actually a DEA agent, so yeah, what a dummy doing this stupid shit. Stupid! Speaking of, um, you know, uh, murder for hire or whatever, I did a murder for hire case before. And it didn't end up like coming all the way to fruition like we wanted. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not uncommon for you to, um, you know, fake the death of the individual you know, with like uh, blood and all the other stuff and then send it to the guy and say, hey, the job is done, whatever it may be, so that you can show that they're complicit in it. So uh, I've done a murder for hire case as well before. Um, and when we cover the ATF and motorcycle gangs, you guys are going to see, because I we, we haven't covered a motorcycle gang yet, have we? No, those, we those haven't, but people are asking for the Waco. The Waco. We did Waco already. The Waco motorcycle gang. Oh, the gang. Waco motorcycle thing. Yeah. Um, before we do that, I think we should cover like some big, because that's more advanced, that's like, the people don't, we need to cover one on Hell's Angels, one on Banditos, and then yeah. we can go ahead and Mongols, all that other stuff. Then we can go ahead and cover that Waco. one with with the uh, with the Waco one. That's the one that they've been requesting the most, though. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, we need to do motorcycle gangs. We haven't done that yet. We haven't even. Yeah, I completely forgot that. Damn. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we haven't done a bunch. Of yeah, we'll we do we'll do a, a motorcycle gang for y'all because there was a really good um, ATF agent that went deep undercover in the Hell's Angels. I think he almost became patched in. If I'm not mistaken, uh, the closest that a law enforcement officer has a ever actually comes to him getting his patch, or did he get patched in? Fuck, I'll double check. I'll double check. He either got patched in or he or he was very close to being patched in um, with the Hell's Angels, and he was undercover uh, ATF agent. He was undercover for fucking years. Um, so we'll talk about that, and definitely, uh, I think you guys will be interested in in the motorcycle uh, gangs. Uh, let's go ahead. The DEA enlisted the help of the FBI cybercrime team in New York, as it had more technological know-how, including experience with the dark web. You're saying he was? FBI agent Chris Tarbell knew that in order to catch Dread Pirate Roberts, they had to wait for them to make a mistake. And according to the FBI, the Dread Pirate Roberts did finally slip up about a year after the agency started investigating. In May 2013, Investigators noticed coding errors, vulnerabilities on the Silk Road website that leaked IP addresses. As a result, they discovered the Silk Road servers were housed in a data center in Iceland. By the way, Ulbricht's defense team doesn't buy this explanation. They believe the NSA spied illegally and tipped off the FBI to the server's location. Agent Tarbell flew to Reykjavik, where Icelandic authorities gave him a drive with information from the servers. The FBI accessed a treasure trove of data. They could see the number of transactions processed, who logged in and out. And crucially, Tarbell and his team had identified that the master computer Silk Road servers talked to, the one Dread Pirate Roberts used to log into Silk Road, was named Frosty. Oh, shit. And Dread Pirate Roberts was logging in with an encryption key that ended with Frosty at Frosty. They could also tell Dread Pirate Roberts recently used internet from a San Francisco cafe to log into a Silk Road server via a VPN. By the spring of 2012, Ulbricht had returned home from Australia and eventually moved to San Francisco to live with a childhood friend. So now the FBI had the name of the computer and could focus their search on San Francisco, but still no idea of Dread Pirate Roberts' real identity. That piece of the puzzle would be filled in by Gary Alford, who worked for the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. As a tax investigator, he was assigned to follow the money, Pause. but instead discovered the identity. So you guys can see here that all these different agencies are investigating the same website and kind of coming at it from different angles based on their, their authority. You got the DEA involved because they're selling drugs on the website. You got HSI involved because um, they're shipping in illegal substances from foreign countries. You have... Um, the FBI involved because it's uh, there's um, uh, computer hacking, uh, and then IRS now because obviously there's money that's coming in that isn't being taxed, right? And there's there's a financial aspect to the investigation. So you can see all these different agencies are working the same case, probably at this point unbeknown to each other, um, uh, and hitting it from different angles based on their respective authorities. None Interesting stuff. None of them knew about each other. Uh, like, they probably found out at some point. Um, and there's something called deconfliction. 
where you can figure stuff out like that. Uh, but, but even early on, I know they like eventually would find out that they're all working on the same thing with each other. But yeah, they didn't know like, like hey, IRS and DEA and FBI is working all working on this yeah, too. Yeah, there's like, there's ways to like deconflict but i mean it's happened before where you, you'll be doing a case and, and this is why it's happened because there's been blue on blues where they'll be at a raid and they'll go in and they didn't know that there was an undercover from another agency there so there's deconfliction now where if you have a target you put them into this this thing right this like website or whatever like it's a law enforcement website you put your target in there and then if anyone else searches that guy you're going to get notified and they're going to call you and then they'll put you in touch with that agency you guys can talk and this is to avoid blue on blue incidents where law enforcement ends up you know doing a raid or some shit like that and they didn't know that there's an undercover from another agency working it so that they can kind of like coordinate and make sure that they kind of get on the same page because it's happened it's happened before it's called deconfliction mm -hmm. guys like the goddamn video anybody going to be explained to be able to explain that to y'all and like it on rumble too guys there's only 300 likes on rumble yeah like the video damn it all right especially um, what what's up Especially because I'm thinking about, you know, when you explain how these agencies, they have to be communicating and working with each other, especially since the 9-11 incident in 2001. Some of them do, but some of them don't do, don't do it, right? Um, do, some agencies do what? Like, they, do, they prefer not to work together. Yes. To get the credit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Some agencies, yeah, they, don't, they have very bad... Um, like, it, it always comes down to the agent level. You know, there's always going to be good and bad agents no matter what agency... Uh, they work for, but yes, yeah, some agencies just have certain reputations, unfortunately, where they don't, they're just not good to work with. You know, the Bureau notoriously has, you know, issues working with others because uh, they kind of think that they're elitists and shit like that. DEA never likes to share information because for the longest time they had a blood culture of having competitive 13s, which I've explained that on other episodes. Yeah. I don't want to bore you guys with details, but it has to do with pay and how they r rise up the ranks in DEA. It's, it's weird. Mm -hmm. um, so every agency has their pluses and negatives. Um, but yeah, like, but deconfliction is typically how you um, identify that you guys are investigating the same target. Which in this case, since it's an online case, they don't know who he is yet. So, um, anything else? But you can also put in websites in there. You could put you you could put in um, names, phone numbers, uh, addresses. You could put all these things into deconfliction, and then if any of them match, they will call you and say, "Yo, this agent from X Y Z office in X Y Z state is also looking at X Y Z." license plate xyz phone number whatever and they'll put you guys together and then you guys can go ahead and deconflict because that's very important from a safety perspective yeah so but, yeah i was question that's why i was questioning the communication yeah because like they're supposed to be communicating since yeah 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 yeah, yeah and a lot of it is for, for safety reasons you, it, it doesn't obligate you to share your information if you don't want to but it at least puts you in touch with someone else that's looking at the same guy to avoid blue on blue which is the biggest reason why they do it deconfliction mm -hmm. it's called uh, all right, let's do it. And every agency has access to deconfliction. State, local, municipal, st federal, all of them. city police, they all do it. Because remember, there's investigators at all different levels. Mm. So. Of Dread Pirate Roberts. Alfred figured that whoever started Silk Road would have had to drum up interest in it long before that Gawker article came out. So he decided to do Google searches for Silk Road prior to June 2011. That's when he stumbled on Albrecht's online posts, where he pretended to be someone who happened to come across Silk Road. Alfred noted the username for the posts, Altoid. He also noticed another post where Altoid asked for IT help on the Bitcoin forum that also included his personal email, rossalbrecht at gmail.com. Someone with a username Altoid also posted on Stack Overflow with a question related to Tor. Soon after, that user changed the alias from Altoid to Frosty. Alfred didn't know the significance of the name Frosty at the time, but what he did have was a real name to track down. He Googled Ross Ulbricht and came across the LinkedIn profile of a young man with rather cryptic life goals. Quote, the most widespread and systemic use of force is amongst institutions and governments. So this is my current point of effort. Alfred asked himself, could Ross Ulbricht be the brains behind Silk Road? Bam, they got him ID. Then came another piece of the puzzle. In July 2013, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers intercepted nine fake IDs Pause. coming into the U.S. from Canada. Homeland okay, test for the audience. Customs and Border Protection officers. What color is their uniform? Let's see what the chat says. Blue or green? Let's see. Let's test time. Let's see how much you guys have been paying attention. <laughs> let's see if you guys have learned. Test time. Pop quiz. What color is a CBP officer's uniform? 
Let's see the IQ of the chat. Let's do a poll, Bills, on YouTube. Blue or green? What color is CBP officer's uniform? That I explained that earlier. And you guys just saw that a bunch of IDs were uh, seized at the, port, at the border. Uh, no, CBP officer's uniform. On uh, yeah, let's let's see what they say on uh, CPO. Huh? What was the officer? What CBP officers? CBP. What color is it? Blue or green, guys? Let's see. We're gonna put the poll up right here. Oh, we do this poll. I'm gonna take a quick piss. Want to see how much y'all pay attention <laughs> and the IQ of the chat, and then also uh, Mo has a quick announcement about uh, the DMs on the man. Just alert airport and you'll know. <laughs> alert airport will tell you everything. And the DMs on demand Black Friday, the Black Friday deal is finally up now. The code is Cyber Black Fresh. So, yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the code is Cyber Black Fresh. Yeah. You guys can check it out now. I'm, gonna, I'm pinning it in the chat right now as Myron's going to the bathroom and taking a piss. And make sure you guys are um, answering the poll in the YouTube chat. Is Damn, fifty percent off. Is it? Is fifty percent yeah. off? Wow. Oh, so it was right. Cyber Black Fresh. All right. Yeah, facts on God. Yes, sir. <laughs> the, the, the code mo, is mo, Cyber mo. Black Fresh. Um, Put it there, Mo. Write it again. Go back and write it again so they can see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Angie, you know I'm here. Uh, oh, okay. What happens? <laughs> well, you got it, Bill. I'm joking. About facts, 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 you facts. Um, so Cyber Black Fresh. That it is. Yeah. Cyber Black Fresh, apply that half off on guide. Damn, next time we have to make these polls like way before Myron drops the question because I know for a fact this guy's been like searching on Google the on color of the uniform. <laughs> you know what? That's facts. Right, guys. Cyber oh, Black Fresh, 50% uh, off on, on, on DMs on demand. You know, because people can write just, it down. Yeah. Write it, it down. We are it's currently the 64% blue. 36% green. Make sure you guys answer yeah, this. Yeah, it's, it's definitely blue. Make sure you guys answer the poll. Angie, it's green. Come on. Bro, we all know it's red, it's bro. It's green. Yes, W red. Dom, the oh, Monko, Monko. W red. It's facts. obviously blue. <laughs> bro, y'all y'all know damn well it's red, bro. It's obviously brown sugar. <laughs> brown. Yep. Come on, guys. Yeah. Facts, <laughs> facts, facts, facts. Uh, I think it's green, though. I mean, if you look for border costume, no, costume border um, patrol, it's going to be green. But I think Myron said CBP, right? Yeah. I'm pretty CBP. sure it's blue. Pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Nigga said Argentina you graded. like the elf that we got from Nick, Fresh? Man said Argentina graded in Venezuela. How dare there you, There you bro? go. How dare you, bro? I mean, I mean, both. I got in-laws in both countries, but still. Um, so, well. guys, make sure you guys <laughs> like the video. What's the code again, Mo? It is Cyber Black Fresh. Fifty <laughs> percent. I, yep. I couldn't believe it. I can't I, believe hey, it. Don't, hey, I don't blame them. Cyber Black off, Fresh. Guys. Fifty percent off, guys. Fifty percent off, bro. On God. Okay, what did they say? Sixty-five percent blue. blue? Damn, the rest of y'all niggas are fucking stupid, bro. You stupid. How many times I gotta explain it, man? Border Patrol is green, CBP officers are blue, guys, okay? Damn, I nailed it. <laughs> I said it. Wait, so it wasn't, it wasn't red? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't red. No, it was not red, Mo. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, let's see here. What do we got? Um, let's keep going uh, with the um, documentary. Got you. It wasn't brown sugar either? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead. security agents decided to pay a visit to the intended recipient. They showed up at 2260 15th Avenue in San Francisco. We, the address we, where Ulbricht had been staying. Oh, that's it? Okay, that's... Okay, I was going to say we can Google his it. Friend and into a sublet he found on Craigslist, where he paid his rent in cash. He took every precaution, including adopting a fake identity. His roommates knew him as Joshua Terry, though he kept much of his backstory was the same. The, he said he was from Texas, I wonder worked in IT, the, which is why he was always... Act, like, was that? I wonder if that was actually the idea that he had because that looks like a picture he will take with somebody and they cut it out. Yeah, it, 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 they, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Well, that's a good question. Um, but what I will say, though, um, as far as like having a backstory or whatever, that's very common where you typically don't want your backstory to be far off like your real story. 
mm-hmm. so that whenever you're under um, duress or whatever, you're able to tell the sto- same story every single time, and it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's actually very common with undercover agents, etc., that their backstory is fairly similar to their real story. Um, so that you don't have to, because you know what they say, whenever you lie, you, you know, you can never lie once. Uh, you want to minimize the lying so that even in times of duress, you're able to, the, the, li- the stories up. match up. You got to keep up with the lie, yeah. Yeah. So, all right, let's keep going. He's on his computer and had recently returned home from Australia, which made not having a cell phone less suspicious. Joshua wow. kept to himself and ate steak dinners for one. When the agents questioned Ulbricht, they observed that he became visibly nervous. He didn't admit to purchasing the fake IDs, let alone that he bought them so he could rent additional servers to deal with Silk Road's growth, as well as security issues. Prosecutors later claimed he prepared for a life on the run, including seeking citizenship on the island of Dominica. Ulbricht volunteered to the agents who showed up at his door that hypothetically anyone could purchase anything they wanted on a site called Silk Road. The agents had never heard of Silk Road and were apparently unaware of any federal investigations, but they did document the incident. So when IRS agent Gary Alford ran another search on Ulbricht, he Bam. found that Homeland Security file on the fake IDs, which cemented his belief that they had the right guy. And there you the go. The pieces of the puzzle. Fun. And that is de- that is probably what led to the deconfliction, which they identified, hey, he's a part of this case. And then, bam, HSI and IRS start working the case together. What are the likes at? We can end this, the poll, by the way. 1,200. 1,200? God damn, I guess y'all really don't want us to turn on the phone lines. Yeah, they don't want to see the sun with us? Yeah, I guess, I guess not. All right, let's keep going. And Dominica is a, and Dominica is a Creole-speaking um, Caribbean country. Ah, okay. Uh, how far is it from uh, from Haiti? I'm um, pretty far. It's more like south, a little closer to Venezuela. Now. It's a little closer to Venezuela, so we're closer to South America. But uh, yeah, on uh, the island. Yeah. Are, are they are they like? Do they look black? Do they look Hispanic? Yeah, they look they look more black. Yeah, black. They look more black. And, and the official language is Creole. Um, yes, yes, Domin- Dominica Creole. Are they are they a sovereign nation or are they like a, a territory? Um, I know it was a it was one it, it used to be one of those French owned countries. Yeah, let's look it up. Yeah, all the people in the islands are black. Okay, all right. Now I I wonder if the if, if it's like a, a Haitian territory or another country's territory. Uh, let's see. Um, we can go back, Bills. We can keep going. Mo, come with the answer came together when Alfred got on the phone with the other agencies to see what they all had. Alfred mentioned the username Frosty that he had found on a forum. That floored FBI agent Tarbell, who knew Frosty to be the name of the computer Dread Pirate Roberts used. Bingo. They knew Ross Elbricht was Dread Pirate Roberts. In their pursuit of evidence, federal agents followed him everywhere. They also had a subpoena from Gmail and noticed that whenever Dread Pirate Roberts logged into Silk Road, Ulbricht was also signed into his Google account. Wait, and whenever Dread it? Pirate Roberts logged out. Real quick, do you know, Myron, how hard it is, or like, how, yeah, how hard it is to get like a subpoena for, for like a website like like Gmail? Uh, Not very a website, very like, easy. I mean, um, good easy? question. Yeah. So oh, with with hard. a subpoena, and certain agencies can do this. Um, Okay, before I go into this ex- explanation, chat, I'm going to ask the chat if they want me to go into it. Because I've explained it before, but I don't know if, if they've, I don't want to be sound redundant. If you guys want me to go over the difference between a subpoena and a search warrant, give me a one in the chat. If you guys want to just continue, give me a two. Because I could obviously have this conversation with Angie on the side. Mm. So, um, guys, one in the chat if you guys want me to go over the difference between subpoenas and search warrants. Or two if you guys want me to just keep going. Because I think I've explained this before, and I don't want to put you out of sleep. Um, but let's see what the chat says. And it's been independent since 1978. So 1970. Okay, independent, independent country. Yeah. Okay. But uh, still a Caribbean country. Bomboka. They kind of talk like that. Uh, it's mostly two in Rumble. Mostly. Let's do a poll on YouTube, I guess. Type in explain subpoenas and search warrants or move on, Bills, as the as the chat thing. We'll give the people what they want. Give it a minute. But while we wait for y'all to go ahead and vote on this. You can like the video. You guys can go ahead and like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check us out on rumble.com slash freshfit, rumble.com slash fedreacts. Also, castleclub.tv. And also, make sure to uh, check me out on Twitter, Unplug FedEx, where I cover a bunch of different things. Um, it's, it's, you know, X-rated content, but it ain't no porn, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, go check me out over there. Unplug FedEx, guys. Uh, very based Twitter. Cover a bunch of different stuff. 
And uh, what else? Um, yeah. Follow Fed Reacts on Instagram. Yes, follow Fed Reacts on Instagram. That's where Angie uh, yeah. runs the Instagram and she posts reels on there. Were well, you posting one reel today or how are you doing it? I can't remember if I posted it today, but I'm making it's just that the the ones that I usually post or the TikToks um, are not like updated. So I'm, I'm trying to make new ones. And I'm, I, oh, shout out to the person that is helping me out that like DM me on the Instagram. And told me how to like and download them on like a high quality, and yeah, so hit me up so we can like work that out how to like make more clips for the channel. Thank you, by the way. Ding, press the ding. Thanks, Mo. <laughs> okay, how's okay. the poll? Uh, the poll is seventy percent are saying yes. Let's see what what Rumble says. Rumble, one of you guys want me to explain subpoenas and search warrants, or or two if you want us to keep going. Damn, okay. 70% on YouTube say yes. Let's see what Rumble says. Because we're pretty much split down the middle right now on uh, on Rumble and on YouTube. Shout out to all y'all ninjas, by the way, man, that are watching on Rumble and on YouTube. Guys, if you if you don't mind, if you're watching on Rumble, open up another tab and like, uh, the, video. like the video on YouTube because the likes are really important for YouTube, right, to get pushed in the algorithm. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, it's, it's mostly, I see it's like 50% on Rumble with, with the twos. Um... Yeah, fifty percent, I would say. Yeah. All right. Since it's a small mind, uh, it's a you small difference. Explain I'll explain it very quickly. quickly. Guys, subpoenas are administrative. Um, search warrants are um, pretty much m more official, right? It's a judicial process. So, well, they're both judicial processes from a legal st perspective, but the search warrant is is an enforcement action versus in a subpoena is administrative action. Okay. So, when you do a subpoena, certain agencies have the ability to do admin subpoenas. HSI. Um, DEA and FBI have the authority to set, send an administrative subpoena. What does that mean? Hey, I identify this phone number. I identify an email address. I identify uh, maybe a username on a, on a website. I'm able to send a subpoena to that the company and say, I need to know who the subscriber is of this phone number, of this email address, etc. And they are uh, obligated to give me that information, okay? But here's the problem with subpoenas, though. When you send a subpoena, the company ha reserves the right a lot of the times to notify the subscriber that they gave their information to a federal agency, mm -hmm. okay? So, like, everyone is different. Like, Facebook, Google, whatever it may be, they might give you maybe a grace period of 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, but where they're going to go ahead and notify the individual that the federal government, you, requested a subpoena on their account. Now, if you do a search warrant, not only are you going to get subscriber information, you're going to get, like, actual usage on the account, everything, Right, so if I do a, a, a search warrant on, let's say, someone's Instagram, I'll get the DMs, I'll get the, I'll, I'll get, I'll get everything that I requested for in a search warrant. But obviously, you need way more evidence. You need probable cause to be able to do a search warrant on someone's Instagram or on their, um, on their in email, whatever it may be. Right, and then if you want to get the emails real time and get the emails as they're coming in, then you need something called a Title Three, which is uh, like a phone tap. Okay, anything when you're getting information real time is considered a Title Three. Uh, but I don't want to go into that because that's a whole other thing. I've explained Title Threes before on this podcast. But regardless, that is a, that is the main difference between subpoenas and search warrants. Search warrants, you're getting it approved by a judge. Okay, and it's typically an it's typically a for enforcement action. Okay. Versus a subpoena as an administrative action, and you're just basically giving you know a sheet of paper saying, hey, under this authority, we have the authority to send a subpoena to you, and you are to give us a subscriber information, but it's limited information a lot of times. But it'll give you a lot of times the, the probable cause that you need for a search warrant. So let's say I identify an email. Now, I'll, now let me give it to you guys in a practical scenario so this all makes sense, okay? Let's go into a dream scenario real quick. Um, thank you. Let's say I'm investigating a criminal, right? Maybe they're a drug trafficker, right? Mm -hmm. And I figure out that their email address is um, Myron Gaines sells drugs one two three, right? At <laughs> AOL.com, right? Or Yahoo.com, right? And okay. I'm uh, right, and I'm like, I wonder who this individual is. This email address came up during the course of my investigation. I do an administrative subpoena. When I do the administrative subpoena, it gives me back the name of the individual, right? That owns that, and it gives his phone number, right? I look through my investigation. I figure out, oh, my informant called this phone number to get drugs before. So now I'm going to start writing a search warrant mm. for that email address to go through the actual contents of the email because I have probable cause now because I've identified the phone number as part of being involved in drug transactions, and I suspect that this individual is involved in drug tra trafficking activities. So that, sub that subpoena, 
allowed me to further the investigation, identify the individual through a phone number. Now that I have the phone number identified, that number has come up in other port, court parts of my investigation, and I can now write a search warrant. I go to the judge with this information. I want a search warrant on the email, etc. and now I'm able to go ahead and uh, get this information. And that's a very surface-level, watered-down version of how you can advance the investigation, but that's the difference between a search warrant, guys, and a subpoena. Uh -huh. Yeah, what, what's the what's the other question? Um, well, does the subpoena cover does the subpoena cover like all the way through just the email, or can you get that far to get like the information from the for the, from the user of the um, phone number? For example, if the user uh, I, I know use, what you're saying use like a fake name to uh, create the email, you, you're can, gonna get the fake name and that's it. If you do a subpoena, all you're gonna oh, do is okay. get the name of uh, that was put on file with it. You're the fake name, the phone number, whatever information they use to sign up for the account, you're going to get a lot of times just the subscriber info, surface level stuff. That's lame though. Maybe an address here or there, but um, but the search warrant's going to give you everything. Okay. You'll be able to get, be way more uh, invasive with the search warrant. Okay. But sometimes doing the subpoena will like kind of wedge the door open a little bit, so you can kind of see what's going on there, and then you can that will give you more probable cause to write a so search that's warrant. That's why it's easy to get a subpoena than a search warrant. A subpoena is administrative, so you can go ahead and just send one to like it was easy. I had like a subpoena form. Mm -hmm. I would um, write it up to AT and T. Hey, I need the subscriber for X Y Z phone number, and then they would tell me who the subscriber was for that phone number. A lot of times it'd be a name, phone number, and an address. Okay. And then sometimes it's fake. It's a PO box or whatever, but that will at least guide you to a, to. A, then you can figure out. Okay, it's under a PO box. Then I figure out. I do. A, I send a subpoena to that PO box. Mm -hmm. Who owns this PO box? Oh, you know, Cindy Lucia. Okay, who's Cindy Lucia? Look up her driver's license. Oh, that's my target's girlfriend. See how okay. you can like use it to yeah. figure shit out. But you gotta get like a bunch of subpoenas. Though. Yeah, you exactly. It's really annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. is a pain in the ass, but that's that's how you do it. Yeah. Okay. Cool, guys. Marco for that. Well, guys, yeah, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Because I, I can tell you guys this from experience because this is what I used to do, man. So like the goddamn video. Good questions, Angie. Uh, let's keep going because I'm sure people in the chat have similar questions. Ulbricht also logged out of his Google account, but they knew this wouldn't be enough to nail him. They needed concrete evidence. They had to catch Ulbricht while his laptop was open and he was logged in on Silk Road as Dread Pirate Roberts. An unlocked computer was also necessary so agents could access his files. This would be difficult to pull off. Authorities knew their best bet was to catch him off guard and arrest him in a public place. Homeland Security agent Jared Duryagian was still pretending to be Silk Road staff member Cirrus and continued to maintain contact with Dread Pirate Roberts. This communication was crucial to the plan they hatched. On October 1st, 2013, at 3.08 p.m. local time, Duryagian saw Dread Pirate Roberts log on. Ulbricht was sitting in the science fiction section of the San Francisco Public Library's Glen Park branch. Duryagian started up a conversation Pause. with Dread Pirate Roberts while posing as... He was in the fiction section, but shit's about to get real very soon. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought it was funny. Okay. Let's keep going. Dearest. Hi. Are you there? Hey. How are you doing? I'm okay. You? That's the HSI agent, Good. by the way, guys. Cirrus. Can you check out one of the flagged messages for me? The flagged messages were in the main administrative section that only Dread Pirate Roberts could access. Dread Pirate Roberts responded. Sure. Bam. Let now that confirms. In. He is okay. admin. You did Bitcoin exchange before you started working for me, right? Dread Pirate Roberts asked this for security reasons because only the real Cirrus would know the answer. Luckily for authorities, the real Cirrus had told them how to answer the security question. Agent Duryagian hoped he recalled correctly when he typed, yes, but just for a little bit. It was a nerve-wracking moment. Oh, shit. Not any more than that? No. I stopped because of reporting requirements. Damn regulators, eh? Okay, which post? Duryagian knew Bam. Albrecht was now looking at an admin screen. He gave the signal to the other agents positioned gotcha, in the library to make a move. A commotion soon broke out near Ulbricht. A woman yelled, F you, as the man next to her appeared like he was about to punch her. When Ulbricht turned around Cuckoo to see the fight, punch. the agent swooped in and grabbed his open laptop. At that point, Ulbricht, quote, lunges towards the laptop, and another agent walks behind him, bear hugs him. Ulbricht was arrested and taken away. Pause. The man and woman who were arguing were, in fact, and guys, they had to create that diversion to make sure that they can grab the laptop. Because remember, he had a kill switch on there. 
if he were ever apprehended by police. So they had to get him away from that laptop before anything. So that's why they created that diversion, take his attention away, and the first agent just grabbed the laptop first before they even grabbed him. So there you go. And remember, they didn't know what he looked like, guys, so they had to do all this. They, the the undercover HSI agent had to you know, verify, yo, well, I'm serious, blah, blah, blah. And then once he was able to go into the admin section they, that showed that it was him, he's able to give the takedown signal. The FBI holds this, la uh, this laptop till this day. Mm. Oh, really? They have in the artifacts. Like, I'm sure they have yeah, probably a part of history now. Yeah. yeah, they probably have a museum in San Francisco yeah. for it. Yeah, certain FBI offices have uh, museums <laughs> yeah. in their field office, which is kind of funny. Yeah. San Antonio has a museum. Yep. I've been to that one. They have a bunch of artifacts from the 9-11, too. Like, oh, yeah, the New York them. field office, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very common to where they'll have um, old pieces of evidence or artifacts from old yeah. cases. Um, in the FBI film fact for you guys, and the FBI field office in San Antonio, they have a bunch of Tommy guns and shit like that and grenades from, like, the mob wars. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any, shit. Do you have any stuff, like, you connect, collected? No, 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 no. I have, like, little trinkets and, like, old stuff, which you guys will see in display yeah. in the new FedRex room. Ooh. Yes, you will. I see an Angie are decorating it for me, so that'll be good um, in the room. So you guys are gonna you guys are going to like the new studio. It's not going to be, obviously, as lit as this one, but it's going to be, you know, it'll be cool. A little, little, uh, be little different for y'all. So yeah, it'd be cute and different. Yeah, well, I want to say cute. That's kind of gay, but you know, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead uh, next. Tevich. <laughs> Undercover agents who created a distraction. Ulbricht's family and friends were shocked. How could the kind, fun, loving man they knew be the same person who ran a global drug bazaar? They couldn't believe it. Ulbricht was indicted on seven charges, including distributing narcotics by means of the internet and engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise. He pleaded not guilty to all charges. The trial began on January 13, 2015, That's the indictment. and lasted three weeks. Many of Ulbricht's supporters showed up, believing a guilty verdict would be a miscarriage of justice. Oh yeah, um, Ulbricht's there defense a, attorney pause, argued. Sorry, there is a website that is called freerust.org. Uh, so Can we pull that up on the side, guys? We, yeah. we could sh show it after we finish the doc. Yeah, um, there is a bunch of people that still support him. And I think there is like five, five hundred thousand people that uh, really signed the petition. Yeah, that signed really want him out because they don't believe he's a murderer. There is people that believe he was a murderer because he hired people to kill other people. And there is a bunch of like conspiracy theories and like rumors about this case I and mean, about these guys. Yeah, obviously. him, him, and Julian Assange are, uh, have huge uh, followings for like their. Well, in Julian Assange's case, is that he shouldn't be prosecuted and he shouldn't be extradited. A judge actually recently. Uh, said that he's he's to be uh, transported from the United Kingdom to the United States for uh, extradited to face uh, charges here. So, yeah. Yeah, crazy yeah. shit, man. Crazy, crazy shit. Well, uh, give me one in the chat if y'all niggas want us to cover Julian Assange. I'm surprised that we didn't we didn't cover him yet. I think I have it on my list. I think I have it on yeah. my list. Yeah. Well, so Russ Ulbricht turned 39 this year, uh, and he's been in prison for like 10 years now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, he spent most of his thirties in, in in prison. I think he made a, like he even made a tweet about it. Like, I spent most of my thirties in prison. I mean, he got like a two death like life sentences or something like that. Yeah, so life imprisonment. Yeah, he's gonna spend a lot of time there. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's keep going. We'll pull up the website here in a second. I I've seen it. I have it up already. All right, uh, we'll, we'll finish and then we'll play it. He at wasn't then. Or Dread Pirate it. Roberts that he had given away the handle in Silk Road to someone else but the jury didn't buy it. On February 5th, 2015, a federal jury found Ross Ulbricht guilty on all seven counts. Before sentencing, Ulbricht wrote a letter to the judge begging for a more lenient sentence. I've had my youth and I know you must take away my middle years, but please leave me my old age. Please leave a small light at the end of the tunnel, an excuse to stay healthy, an excuse to dream of better days ahead and a chance to redeem myself in the free world before I meet my maker. On May 29, 2015, U.S. District Judge Catherine B. Forrest delivered her sentence. You were the captain of the ship as the Dread Pirate Roberts, and you made your own laws, and you enforced those laws in the manner that you saw fit. So it wasn't a world without restriction. It wasn't a world of ultimate freedom. It was a world of laws that you created. They were your laws. It is fictional to think of Silk Road as some place of freedom. No drug dealer from the Bronx selling meth or heroin or crack has ever made these kinds of arguments to the court. It is a privileged argument 
It is an argument from one of privilege. You are no better a person than any other drug dealer, and your education does not give you a special place of privilege in our criminal justice system. It makes it less explicable why you did what you did. There is no reason to make a choice between these two people that I see that are on display, the Ulbricht who is the leader of the criminal enterprise and the Ulbricht who is known and loved. What is clear is that people are very, very complex, and you are one of them. They are made up of many different qualities and many characteristics, with no one quality defining them. And there is good in you, Mr. Ulbricht, I have no doubt, but there is also bad, and what you did in connection with Silk Road was terribly destructive to our social fabric. Mr. Ulbricht, it is my judgment, delivered here, now, on behalf of our country, that on counts two and four, you were sentenced to a period of life imprisonment to run concurrently. Oh, on shit, count five, oh, you were sentenced to five years imprisonment to run concurrently. On count six, you were sentenced to 15 years imprisonment, also concurrent. And for money laundering in count seven, you are sentenced to 20 years, also concurrent. In the federal system, there is no parole, and you shall serve your life in prison. Oh, this shit. is far oh, beyond shit. what the prosecution had even asked for. Albrecht had hoped Silk Road would become such a success that he would be famous. According to a journal entry read by the prosecutor to the jury, Albrecht wrote, I imagine that someday I may have a story written about my life, and it would be good to have a detailed account of it. His dream came true, but perhaps not in the way he had imagined. The, hood, eh? the FBI later identified Ulbricht's mentor, Variety Jones, as Roger Thomas Clark, a Canadian arrested in Thailand in 2015. <laughs> in 2020, Clark pled guilty in a Manhattan court to conspiring to distribute massive quantities of narcotics. As for the two corrupt officers investigating Silk Road, Former DEA agent Carl Force was sentenced to six and a half years in prison for extortion, money laundering, and obstruction of justice. Former Secret Service agent Sean Bridges was sentenced to nearly six years in prison on charges of money laundering and obstruction of justice. He was later sentenced to an additional two years for another theft of Bitcoin from the US government. This guy. Thanks for watching. For Stupid. Think, I'm Cindy Palm. All right. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that one, man. You know, short and concise uh, documentary on the situation, uh, giving you guys a bunch of tidbits in there with some some knowledge, etc. I think um, that was one of our more um, educational um, episodes of FedRex. I got some dots on the on the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. So the Silk Road. Let's pull up the website too, Bills. Yeah. Um, so it generated approximately 1.2 billion in sales mm -hmm. and 80 million dollars in commissions. And also on November 3rd of 2020. Law enforcement seized over one billion worth of digital currency from this case. So that was three years ago. God damn. And there is also something here. They actually got um, a person, a, a guy named James Ellison, um, a.k.a. Red and White, with narcotics trafficking um, and money laundering offenses in connection with his sales of large quantities of narcotics on the Silk Road um, online marketplace. And in connection with this, um, he claimed that he arranged for the murder of five people for Sick Road funder Ross Aldrich. So. Shit. And he was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars in Bitcoin back then. All right. Um, let's pull up this website here real fast, as you guys can see. This is, I think, the petition website to get him freed. FreeRoss.org. Uh, it's FreeRoss.org is what it is? The yes. Arch. Okay. Sure. Um, you know, obviously, uh, over half a million have signed to Free Ross. Um, he spent 3,707 days in prison. Um, he got two life sentences plus 40 years without parole. Um, scroll down. Uh, smeared with false allegations uh, is what they're saying. And then scroll down some more. And then they show the, the, the sentencing disparity, right? You can see all the people that were Silk Road defendants that got... You know, seven years, three and a half, six years, 17 months, three years, five and a half years, um, 13 and a half years co-owner uh, for Roger Clark, uh, Karl Mark, right? Corrupt federal agent. And obviously, Sean Bridges, you guys can see here. And you can see the, um, you know, the disparity amongst all the other people. But the thing is, is that he's the boss. So that's why they're going to give him, punish him the hardest. Uh, but yeah. And then he's uh, serving his 11th year in, uh, in prison. Scroll down. Is that a prison pick right there? Yeah, well, I guess him with a bunch of, looks like a bunch of gang members. This the hood, ain't it? That's that's interesting. Well, this is Arizona. So in Arizona, they, they uh, I don't think there's as much race divide as like in Texas and in California. 
So uh, he's a model prisoner, according to BOP. Um, what else do we got here? Uh, so, yeah, they're trying to get him out. Who, who's that? His mom? Okay. So, yep. There we go. That's the petition. I mean, you know, it's up to you guys. You guys want to sign a petition? There's a website right there. Like, I'm I'm kind of in the middle with it. You know, obviously, he did some dumb shit. But should he have gotten life? No, absolutely not. I don't think he should have got life. Twice. He got two lives. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's a little wild for him to get life. I think that's a very hard punishment for uh, nonviolent offenses. But the way that they're looking at it is he facilitated the ability for violent drug offenders to do what they do or violent criminals to do what they do. Because um, remember, guys, the website sold a bunch of shit um, besides just drugs. Um, Are they treating it like RICO? Almost. With the continuing criminal enterprise statutes, yes, almost. Um, it's not necessarily RICO, but it's a tier right below. Mm. A good point. Um, all right. Uh, did we hit the uh, we didn't hit the numbers, did we? Damn, y'all don't want to like the video. Four. I guess we're not going to see the sun. I guess we're not going to open up the phone lines. We gave you all plenty of time to like the video so that we can hit the phone lines, Mark, but it seems like you guys don't want to do it. You was about to say see the sun. <laughs> no, I don't see the sun. No, no, no. But we could have been on the phone for like 30, 40 minutes. But yeah. But yeah, I guess these guys uh, don't want to do it. Mario, you can we only got 1.4K likes. We told y'all, man, 1,800 likes and we will do it. But it doesn't look like you guys want to do it, man. So well, We actually have 1,700 Mar watching right now. So. Yeah. Mario, Mario, you can well, but we told them before when we had like 1,800. Mario, you could, Mario, you could do big mo hours in these phone lines, bro. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Uh, that's it? All right. Well, I'll I hit some of the chats. All right. Uh... Can you put a holiday discount on your consulting price, one hour cost, for the price of what you would normally charge a half hour? <laughs> Man, you got some nerve to us now. Yeah, huh? no, I mean, guys, it's, you know, like I said before, I got to protect my time, man. Uh, it's not about making money. It's about just protecting time. Blizzard, the company that created Overwatch, had internal conflict of sexual harassment, and they were basically getting canceled. McCree was the name of one of the guys that worked at the company that was accused, so they changed it to Cassidy and Overwatch. Oh, oh. how'd I fucking know some woke, woke bullshit, man? Yeah, yeah, bro. Shout out to you, uh, Jonad. Um, SEO 971. Hey, Martin, if you want a real tour of the dark web, you should look into a guy named Ryan Montgomery. He is a white hat, hat hacker, uh, a good guy that goes after pedos online. He would make a great guest. I think I've heard of him. Okay. Uh, King Darulo, Myron, when working at a specific position for the Bureau and eventually you want to transfer to another position in the Bureau, such as Intel Analyst, I, can I transfer internally or do I have to go through a manual application process? Is there a shortcut? You'll probably have to manually apply like everybody else, but since you're already in the Bureau, it'll be a lot easier for you to transition over to Agent or Intel Analyst. Just keep in mind that you're probably going to have to go back to Quantico. Call. Um, because uh, Intel analysts I know go to the academy for a few months, and then agents go for a few months as well. But uh, analysts is less than agent in training. Uh, Al Boyce, any updates on getting the channels remonetized? Is it a possibility? We'll see. Um, uh, Marvin goes, you say subpoena. I hear the sound of blackberries being smashed by hammers. What? Okay. Potato, potato, am I right? Love blasting a pot in my custom bulldozer. All right, Marvin. Um, <laughs> hi, Marvin. Did you ever look at any of the code statistics and data I sent you? I sent it before and updates during the DBZ stream. Moreover, I can help with your engineering issues. Blue screen, where, BSOD. Where do you send it, Reading Math? Send it to Fed Can Reacts. you send it to Fed Reacts, bro? Because yeah. I get too many DMs. I'm not going to see your guys' DMs nine out of ten times. They don't even show up sometimes. So uh, send it to Fed Reacts and then put, what, what, pull up his Instagram. Uh, sorry, not his Instagram. Pull up his uh, message again and put it what, in all caps. Put stats. Put stats in all caps when you message Fed Reacts, Reading yeah. read Math 97, so that Angie can find it and bring it to my attention. It'll be a lot easier for us to catch you over there than on my main Instagram, man. I get literally hundreds of DMs a day. I don't even look at them. Uh, I don't have Instagram. God damn it, bro. God damn it. Snigger, man. Do it. All right. Message, uh, Mo, 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 how could they get, get a hold of you? Then? FNSreach at gmail.com. Oh, is the account made? Yeah. It's I think I see made it made already, yeah. FNFreach at gmail.com? Yeah. FNFreach. Spell it for the people. F N F F as in November. F and then November and then F again. Yes. Reach at gmail.com. Reach at gmail.com. Bam. Okay, guys, that is the official email. Y'all heard it her here first. That's the official email for wanting to get in touch with us, guys. F N F reach at gmail.com. Again, Fox November Fox Reach R E A C H at gmail.com. Okay. Um yeah, Icy and Angie manage that uh, email address. 
and they'll respond to you guys there. That is where you go ahead and ask your um, consultation. If you wanted to book a consultation, if you guys want to uh, ask a, a question, if you guys want to um, suggest a guest for the show, if you are a creator and you want to collab with us or whatever else, that is going to be our general inbox for everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, FNF reach at gmail.com. You put gmail.com. I, 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 I just don't correct it. Yeah. G nigga said Gmail. -o. Um, <laughs> that, that, well, yeah. FNFreach <laughs> at gmail.com. So message it there, bro. And Andrew will uh, have access to it along with Icy. All right. Um, let's see here. We got another chat. Another one? Okay. Mm -hmm. FB24 goes, I work for DOD and just want to say I'm a huge fan and love this channel. God bless. Shout out to you, bro. And uh, thank you for keeping us safe over there at DOD. That is the military, uh, pretty much, Department of Defense. Um, I think we're caught up on everything, right? We got yeah. one more right here. One more? Um, okay. Angie already took the picture. He just uh, basically yeah. sent his email. I don't have Instagram. My email is... At, at, okay. Angie got it. I, I got it. Nigga picture dropped his it. real email, NYU, <laughs> EDU. Goddamn. Okay. Um, yeah, she'll she'll be looking for your email, bro. Message that email, fnfreach at gmail.com. And for all you guys that have questions or whatever, you want to book a consultation... Um, and put it in the headlines. Yeah. Like if you and want a consultation, put consult. If you uh, uh, for this situation here, stats. put stats. She'll know. Okay. Because like I told y'all before, I'm trying to update the stats um, on on our link tree. So we appreciate that. Um, other than that, man, I guess we're gonna close this thing out because you guys didn't get the likes up uh, like we wanted. Check me out on on uh, Twitter, guys. Oh shit, we we're at 38k followers now. Shit. <laughs> we're like 37 <laughs> earlier, so like we're growing, man. So um, anyway, yeah, go check it out, man. Unplug FedEx. You know, it's not that crazy. I'm, I'm sensationalizing it a bit. It's not as crazy as people say it is. But um, but yeah, man, go check it nope. out there uh, for some of my political stances, geopolitical stances, um, thoughts on certain situations going on in the world. Use the code Black Cyber Black Fresh. Okay, link is in the description, by the way. If you guys want to go ahead and get DMs on demand half off, you guys have been asking for for damn near a year, so we got it for y'all, and we got a discount code. Cy uh, black is Cyber Black Fresh again? Cyber, Cyber Black, black Fresh. Cyber Black Fresh, because fresh is black as fuck, man. So go ahead and check it out over there, guys. Um, we're going to close out the show. Y'all didn't get the likes up. Maybe on the next one. You guys can show some love and like the video, and we'll get the phone lines open for y'all. Um, I get but, extreme. Uh, other than that, man, we love you guys. Um, I get extreme anxiety we, when I see uh, your Twitter, bro. We appreciate y'all supporting the show. <laughs> Um, for all the haters, just tune into the beginning of the show. I explain all the other BS drama with Angie, you guys. We're not going to address it again. We answered y'all questions. You know, if people are going to analyze us that crazy, uh, even after I've told you guys what it is, then hey, it is what it is, man. Just you can't make everybody life. happy. Buy so, a life, guys. It is what it is. Get, uh, get but we love y'all. Really. We'll catch you guys uh, next episode tomorrow. We got Mark Tilbury in the house. We're going to talk about Money Monday. Peace. Special agent with Homeland Security Investigations, okay, guys? HSI. This is what Fed Reacts covers. Defender Jeffrey Williams and Associate Weissel did commit the felony. So here's what 6 9 actually got. Racketeer conspiracy. This attack shifted the whole U.S. government. This guy got arrested. Espionage, okay? Trading secrets with the Russians. John Wayne Gacy, a.k.a. the Killer Clown, okay? One of the most prolific serial killers of all time. Killed 33 people. Zodiac Killer is a pseudonym of an unidentified serial killer who operated in Northern California. All these serial killers, guys, they really get off on getting attention from the media. Many years, Jeffrey Epstein sexually exploited and abused dozens of minor girls at his home. It was OJ working together to get Nicole killed. We're going to go over his past, the gang ties, so that this all makes sense.